Hey folks, welcome to the world of management accounting. My name is CA Ganesh Bharadwaj. I am a chartered accountant in practice and a teacher by passion. And I'm based out in Chennai. And I'm going to be your faculty for the subject Paper 12, Management Accounting, which is a part of your CMA Intermediate course as per Syllabus 2022, right? So currently I handle two papers which is paper eight, cost accounting, and paper 12, management accounting. So these two are the papers I handle for CMA intermediate. And right now we are going to look about, we are going to look at this particular subject, paper 12, which is management accounting. Now this, in this first video, what we are going to see, we are not going to get into the technicalities of the paper. So first, I'm going to set the base rules. I'm going to tell you what you can expect out of this particular subject and what can you expect out of my videos, out of the lectures, and what are the do's and don'ts. Most importantly, what are the do's and don'ts and what are the things that you need to follow in order to enhance your level of understanding in this paper and actually score well in your exams. So I'm going to give you a bird's eye view of the paper management accounting. We are not going to see the technicalities of the paper in this video, fine. So technically, that's why I'm calling this video, this particular uh, session as before we begin. So we have not begun yet. So I'm going to give you a bird's eye view or a perspective on this paper in this particular video, fine. So let's get started. And we all have assembled here for this particular paper 12, which is management accounting, right? Now, the first thing that you need to know is that this paper, Management Accounting, is a brand new paper which has been introduced for the very first time in your CMA Intermediate course itself. This is as per Syllabus 2022. So the old syllabus, which was Syllabus 2016, didn't have a specific paper for Management Accounting. Yes, there was a paper called as Cost and Management Accounting and Financial Management. So they had combined three things cost accounting, management accounting, and financial management in one paper itself. So that the scope of management accounting was very, very less. Out of a 100 mark paper, three different disciplines of accounting were actually involved. And out of that management accounting was a very small chunk of it. Now, of course, the name of the course itself is CMA, cost and management accounting. So obviously, they have realized the importance of management accounting. And this has been kept as a separate new paper which is paper number 12. That is the eighth paper in your last paper in your CMA intermediate course. Clear with this? Yes. Now, certain things that I want to tell you before we get into the technicalities of this subject. Fine. So there are certain things that we are going to look at, a very important uh, things that we are going to look at today. And uh, you might be having some perspective. You might have heard certain things from your seniors or from your uh, friends about the paper. So I'm not sure who has uh, told you what. So I want to clearly tell you what you can expect from this paper, how to crack this paper properly. So all these things we will be, I will be telling you in this video. And of course, most importantly, what are the things that you need to follow while you are watching the lectures? So all these things will be covered in this particular video. So we are not going to get into the technicalities of the paper. I'm just giving you a perspective and overview. Having that perspective, before entering into the subject, any subject for that matter is very, very important for a very good strategical preparation for your exams. Clear? So let's get started. First, number one, I will start everything from the basics. I will start everything from the basics and our lectures will be 100% in English. For the benefit of all, I'm going to talk only in English. So ideally, I know Tamil and I also, I know English, Hindi to some extent I know. But in this video and in throughout our lectures, it is going to be 100 percentage in English for the benefit of all the students. And most importantly, we will be starting. We will be starting from the basics. Now, if you see management accounting is a subject that is slightly linked with cost accounting. That's why in CA intermediate, not CMA, CA intermediate, if you see, they have a paper called cost and management accounting. 
in fact even the old syllabus of uh, cma intermediate they had cost and management accounting 50 marks financial management 50 marks that's what it was there so cost accounting and management accounting are slightly interlinked so sir do you mean to say that if i want to if i want to watch your lectures on paper 12 management accounting i need to necessarily finish paper 8 cost accounting and then you only come absolutely not wherever there is a link in this paper wherever there is a link to cost accounting i will give you a background and i will start so you need not worry about this in fact in fact i will walk you through the syllabus also in this video three chapters that are there in your paper 8 cost accounting are exactly appearing ditto the same copy paste they have made it in this particular subject paper 12 management accounting so three chapters of your uh, cost accounting are there in this uh, subject uh, management accounting of course apart from what you have in cost accounting in each of these chapters certain advanced level concepts are also there so but there are three chapters that are straight away present in both the papers so single preparation you can finish even both but anyways here in management accounting when we are doing I will give you a background and I will tell you what these chapters are or wherever there is a link in cost accounting in this paper management accounting the link the background will be clearly explained in such a way that even if you have not studied um, cost accounting you will be able to directly start with management accounting because cost accounting is the fourth paper in your group one management accounting is the fourth paper in group two so so suppose you are a student who are who is actually directly appearing for group two and then you, you are planning to go to group one in that case obviously you'll be studying management accounting first and then you'll go to cost accounting so for the benefit of all wherever there is a link to cost accounting a conceptual background and a contextual background will also be given so that you will find it at ease so you need i'm not assuming that you know cost accounting and then only you come to management accounting that is what i i want to make very clear here so whatever is the concept we will be starting from the basics clear next this subject this subject very similar to cost accounting this subject is actually a combination of numbers and words nothing much about it so if you look at any question maximum there will be few words and few numbers that's all some english that is words will be mentioned to give a context of the question and of course you will be having some numbers so it's a numerical paper it is a practical paper so you have nothing more than numbers and words now, sir, numbers are there, which means should I have strong mathematical skills? Absolutely not. No strong mathematical skills like calculus, your uh, derivatives, all these things. Absolutely not. Nothing of that sort. Advanced level mathematics and all is not required. Simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Apart from that, some basic 8th standard mathematics, your basic algebra for framing equations, very, very simple mathematics basic mathematics is only there because i am telling this very clearly right now because i've seen certain students who attend the classes with a preconceived notion that sir this has some mathematics involved so it is going to be very difficult don't worry it doesn't have complicated mathematics it doesn't have some advanced level of mathematics like integral calculus differential calculus you know nothing of that sort simple basic mathematics like addition subtraction multiplication division of course your basic eight standard mathematics is only there so and all of this is fully concept driven and logical so you need not worry about it everything will be started from the scratch everything will be started from the scratch in terms of concepts next this subject is fully conceptual and logic driven so absolutely we are not going to mug up anything whatever we are studying i will first give you a background as to why we are studying this and then i will get into the technicalities and explain the concept one by one so that you will know why you are studying whatever you are studying so whatever you are studying you will know the reason and the logic as to why ever why we are doing it right now are you clear with this so everything is conceptual and logic driven there is no scope for mugging up so please don't think that i can just mug up something and go no in fact this paper management accounting is a core paper core means a very very important paper for your entire course because as as it is the course name itself is cma 
cost and management accounting. So once you finish this course, you will be called as a cost and management accountant. So management accounting is what we are going to see right now. It's a core paper. There is no scope for mugging up. Everything is logical. And for every particular step that we are going to do in every solution, there is going to be a logic that is in, hidden inside it. That is what I'm going to unearth and I will, go, I will explain you clearly as to why we are doing all these concepts and all of that. Are you clear with it? And think of this subject like solving a puzzle. It's like solving a puzzle. Now, if you see, for example, a puzzle like Sudoku. Okay, you know Sudoku, right? So Sudoku, if you see, it's a crossword puzzle. So if you see in Sudoku, there will be multiple rows and columns. In certain uh, cells, they will give you some numbers and they will give you some rules of the game between one to nine only you can use numbers one to nine only you can use. So if they give you like this and ask you to crack this Sudoku, that is fill the missing figures, fill the missing numbers. So what you do is you logically think and you do, correct? It is not like, it is not like I will always say, start with the first cell, then fill the second cell to the right, then come down and fill the third cell. Like that, if you move, definitely you will crack. No, I cannot come up with a structure like this. Based on the given data and based on the required data, you need to customize your solution. That's where this, this entire subject is conceptual and logic driven. It is 100% driven by logics. You can say this, this is nothing but a logic bomb. So filled with logics, only practical cases we will be seeing throughout the subject. That's how it is. So please remove the misconception that you can mug up something and write. No, that's not the way it works. And it is a fully practical paper. It's a practical subject, involves numerical aspects of computation and all of that. Clear with this? Yes. Now, the fourth point is that we I will be giving you a comprehensive coverage. A comprehensive coverage, meaning entirety the scope whatever is mentioned in your icai study note study material 100 percentage of that will be covered in our lectures that is all the illustrations that are mentioned in your institute study material it will be covered during the course of our lectures every single illustration we will be doing it during the course of our videos during the course of our lectures and i'll be telling you the logic I will first explain the concepts and then move to one concept I will explain related questions we'll be doing. Then we move to the next concept related questions we'll be doing. So actually you will get to know more about this as we enter into the uh, lectures. But before that I want to clearly tell you that our classroom discussion will be very comprehensive that e when you're starting it you might not know what the subject is as you proceed into the paper as we proceed into the classes and by the time you finish it you will have a complete confidence which is absolutely sufficient from an examination perspective that's why we are going to give you a comprehensive coverage and all the illustration uh, questions in your study material will be covered 100 percentage fine and number number five most important part this subject this subject both management accounting and even cost accounting i would have told all these points even in cost accounting just anyways i'm telling this once again in management accounting because certain students might be attending first management accounting so first for the benefit of them i'm telling you this subject requires solving more number of problems so what in the lectures we will be doing is i will give you a complete understanding of how to solve the problems solutions everything will be done in the classroom in fact i will give you the solutions also in our handbook i will show you how our handbook is the solutions are also present clear and i will give you the approach the solutions i will walk you through every solution in a very detailed manner we will be doing everything but once the video gets over you are watching a particular session once the session gets over immediately it is your duty to take your pen out and put it on a piece of paper and start solving all the questions that we covered in the class. That is, in the session, I will be solving all the questions. In a video, if you watch, whatever questions we have solved in that video, once you finish the video, solve these sums independently by yourself. That is the only way you can learn the subject. For that, for that, I'm giving you one time-tested approach. So have, a 400 pages, please buy a 400 pages long sized ruled notebook. So 400 pages, it should be a long sized book that you a ruled book. Buy a 400 pages long sized ruled notebook, have it with you. 
dedicated for our paper 12 management accounting as and when we finish a lecture take this book solve the sums take this book solve the sum so one video one video you watch in that video we finish let's say four five sums immediately once you finish that video solve this four five sums independently then watch the next video so if you have this habit as we complete, as I finish the subject, you would have also parallelly covered your revision and you would have also been completely done with your preparation with respect to exam. Finally, one time you revise, you write one mock test paper, go up here for the exam and you will create a history. Let me be honest with you, that's how it works. Now, if you just to watch the videos, like watching a movie, like binge watching, if you watch series, like watching a series back to back, if you watch without practicing, it might not help you properly because this paper is all about practice. This paper is all about practice. I will help you how to do the subject, how to learn the subject, what it, what is there, what are the concepts, everything from basics to advanced level in a very crystal clear manner, I will explain. But only you need to practice that because only by practice, you will be able to ace the paper. You will be able to perfectly write the paper and come out of the exam hall. That's how it works everywhere. So this is the same thing for cost accounting. This is also the same thing for management accounting. Generally in practical paper, just looking at the videos or just going through the question will not help. You need to take your pen out, put it on a piece of paper and solve it because only if you solve, you will have, you will make some mistake. And only if you make some mistake, you will know how to rectify it. Yes, I made a mistake here. Take a red color ink, take a red color ink and correct that mistake. And if you're still not able to get it, now you go look at the solution only in the place where you have made the mistake. You can rectify it in a red ink and then continue once again independently without looking at the solution. Are you clear with this? So this is a itinerary process. This has to come by way of multiple iterations. You need to solve. You need to practice. It's a repetitive process. So that needs to be done. Are you clear? And have this 400 uh, pages long size rule notebook exclusively for management accounting. Now, as we proceed into this uh, subject, as we, as I finish every chapter, if you also practice all the sums independently, the level of confidence that you will get will be tremendous and you will be all ready and prepped up for your examination. Clear with this? Yes. Next, our handbook I will show you consists of 210 sums approximately. That is all your uh, study material illustrations. Everything has been included here in our handbook. So we will be covering, giving an extensive coverage, which is going to be your source of preparation. You can take this as one source of preparation. You need not refer anything. I can tell this to you with a very reasonable level of certainty because whatever is given in the study material only, I have just kept it in our handbook. I have just done some little sequencing part and formatting part but to just enhance your level of understanding. That's all. Because for us, the institute study material is everything that is going to be the source of preparation. So I have just made it as a handbook. Certain changes I have made, certain changes I have made, slight changes as in the sequencing part and the formatting part changes I have made. That is the only value addition I have made. But to be honest, to be honest, we will be covering the entire study material illustrations. So that is the entire source of preparation for your examination. So that's why I can tell you with a reasonable level of uh, certainty that you can easily, this is, this is going to be your one-stop preparation. This is going to be your one source of preparation to attend your examination. Are you clear with this? Yes. And in this handbook, in this handbook, you know, I will be, I will be giving, first the concepts will be explained. Then you will be having, you will be having uh, the questions as well as the solutions. So the, both the question as well as the solution will be mentioned in our handbook. Now you might have a question. Sir, you are going to give us the question. You are also going to give us the solution. Then is, if everything is there, then why should we attend the lecture? Everything is anyways there in your handbook. So I will just download your handbook and uh, that will be enough, no sir. Now, in fact, everything is there in the institute study material also. Still, why do you feel there is a need somewhere you feel, no? So something, that is, something is there that I don't understand. How am I going to fill the gap? What is that you don't understand? Somewhere, see, question and answer is only, question is a starting point. Solution is the end point, correct? So solution, how to arrive at the solution will not be mentioned anywhere. 
solution will be given anyone can give you a printed solution but how to arrive at the solution that's what we are going to see in this in this series of lectures in this entire uh, course of in this entire course series of lectures that we are going to see in our lectures the entire process is about learning things conceptually applying the concepts by way of numerical problem and i will make you self reliant self reliant so that you can you any kind of question comes you can solve the question on your own you need not look at any source you can solve it on your own and you can just check it so basically what is the problem sir question is given answer is given if both are given still you feel there is a, some gap that needs to be filled what is that gap that needs to be filled now based on based on whatever interaction that i have done with students i have analyzed that this is the basic problem that many students face and solutions solutions i told you anyways will be discussed during the lectures throughout every single solution i will walk you through but solution is not the end of it so how do you arrive at the solution what is actually the gap that you feel if both the question as well as the solution is given you still feel that there is a need for something that is it unfulfilled what is that that's what i'm going to explain right now now problem solving has four steps involved in it four steps involved in it first is reading the question reading properly the entire question needs to be thoroughly read number 2 the data that is present in the question needs to be segregated into given data and required data that is what is given what is required given data is the starting point required data is the destination for us now once you have this data segregated into given and required now you can sequence the steps you can sequence okay so step number 1 step number 2 step number 3 step number 4 and finally step number 5 is going to be my answer like this you can sequence so how do i sequence the step this is where conceptual understanding of the subject is required that is where i am going to come in and give you the value addition so just by looking at the solution you cannot you cannot understand why sir question number 1 there are only five steps question number two there are seven steps now both come from the same concepts why that is where we are i'm going to give you a value addition i'm going to tell you what is this subject all about every concept i will give you a background i will do a detailed explanation i will give you the objective that we are going to achieve by way of reading this particular concept and the practical application of the concepts will be done by of numerical problems so if you learn the subject like this any kind of question you can tackle by yourself that's that is the overall objective of our lectures are you clear with this fine and if you do this if you do all these things whatever i'm telling you right now if you do this properly if you follow this sincerely after every lecture if you practice your uh, you know all the questions on your own after you watch the lectures during the lectures anyways i'll be covering all the questions and answers after the lecture if you go uh, go home as in after the lecture if you just start practicing all your uh, questions on your own in this 400 pages long size ruled notebook if you do that and as i told you have a red color pen and in case you are making a mistake mark that as a correction if you do all these kind of things then and there as we finish every chapter now scoring an 80 plus is a sure shot i'm telling you it is a guarantee you can easily score 80 plus now don't think that sir 80 plus and all how can we score absolutely not you can easily score 80 plus it is a misconception why when you are studying your 10th or 12th standard now scoring an 80 plus was possible no what 80 plus we were talking about 90s or even centum that's what we were talking at then what is different right now what has changed right now in your cma course in professional courses what has changed nothing has changed nothing has changed just the mindset has changed people around us they keep telling that no this is a high level course so you cannot score above uh, 70 80 and all our target is only 60 or 50 no don't keep like that scoring an 80 plus is 100% possible it is absolutely possible if you follow all these things whatever i tell you during the course of our lectures if you strictly follow that absolutely getting an 80 plus is possible in fact in fact in my ca intermediate exams in there was a paper called cost and management accounting i scored 94 marks in cma intermediate now i am not telling this to show off that i have scored so much no i used to be a very average type of student only but every day i used to consistently prepare i used to solve all the questions independently and as a student i myself couldn't believe that i scored a 90 plus 
absolutely yes i i would i would not say that you know i targeted that and did it i was just keeping on doing my work and automatically it happened so to be very honest that's all it takes sincere preparation from your side along with be very consistent in while you're watching the lectures so every lecture you watch then do whatever sums that has been done independently then go to the next lecture watch it fully properly at a normal speed don't uh, put it in 1.5 speed and all no no watch it in a normal speed and then once that lecture is over again practice all the sums covered in the lecture so on if you keep doing it if you move along with the lectures automatically scoring an 80 plus is certainly possible are you clear with this yes now now let me just uh, walk you through the handbook that uh, that will be given to you <coughs> in this particular subject paper 12 management accounting so you will be getting this handbook for cma intermediate paper 12 management accounting right now this is as per syllabus 2022 the latest syllabus now if you look at this year as per cma institute study note cma institute study note the study material of cma institute is called a study note now if you look at this so we broadly have 10 chapters in our cma institute study note they call they have bifurcations they have made some bifurcations like sections and modules so section is a broad categorization inside a section there might be more than one modules okay so to put it short if you see section a introduction to management accounting there is only one module there that is also of the same name section b abc activity based costing what it is and all we will see later don't worry about that fine activity based costing insert that inside that section b there is one module if you see there is one section c decision making tools this is the only section where under this section there are multiple modules multiple chapters if you see under this uh, section c decision making tools you have marginal costing a chapter called marginal costing applications of marginal costing in short term decision making transfer pricing like that you have three modules under this particular section so similarly if you find for all other sections inside a section there is generally only one module only in the section c inside this you have three modules or in other words what i have done overall you have 10 modules 10 modules i have just made it as 10 chapters i have just made it as 10 chapters so i have not done it as section and module and all overall 10 chapters the name of the chapters are all kept as the same so the name of the chapters i have not changed for example even the numbers the sequence also i have not changed marginal costing if you see this is module number three if you go as per your CMA study note, it is module number three. As per our book, it is chapter number three. That's all. Fine. So I have not done this section module and all that. I have just kept it as chapters. So overall, we've got 10 chapters here. In fact, I have also done something called a syllabus mapping. If you see any, you take any chapter, transfer pricing. If you refer our book, it will be chapter number five. If you refer the same chapter in your CMA study note, study material, so it is going to be module number five. That's all. That is the only difference. So nothing, no much of difference. In fact, the numberings are also one and the same. In fact, in paper eight cost accounting, I would have done a lot of sequence changes. So here in this case, there is no much of sequence changes I have made. Just the sequence we will be following at par with your CMA Institute study material. Clear with this? Yes. Now, now. I told you that I told you that this particular uh, paper management accounting has been introduced as a separate paper for the very first time. It has been introduced as a separate paper for 100 marks the first time. Earlier, it was under old syllabus 2016. There was a paper called cost and management accounting 50 marks financial management 50 marks. So cost and management accounting 50 marks put together in that management accounting some topics alone were there. So not this much detail here in new syllabus in syllabus 2022 we have certain chapters which have been introduced for the very first time in your CMA intermediate. So chapter like activity based costing then you have divisional performance measurement responsibility accounting decision theory these four chapters have been introduced for the very first time in your cma intermediate till date in your cma intermediate these chapters were not at all there 
in disguise of in, inside any 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 subjects this was not there so this is the first time they have introduced four chapters newly for the very first time in cma intermediate clear so these are all some new chapters new chapters in your cma intermediate so obviously when something has been introduced for the first time it means that the importance is slightly more the importance is slightly more so we will go on that assumption these four chapters are the new chapters introduced for the very first time in your cma intermediate now 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 out of the 10 chapters out of the 10 chapters one second yeah so out of the 10 chapters chapter number 1 and chapter number 9 are theory that is numerical uh, questions will not be there in these two chapters chapter number 1 is completely theory obviously an introduction chapter number 9 is a practical theory that is they will give some scenario with some numbers and all will be there you need to logically think and write so that would also be predominantly a theory driven theory as in numerical computation will not be there much but for these two chapters in the remaining eight chapters numerical solving of questions so you need to practically solve the questions so that's how this entire subject is going to be are you clear with this so out of 10 chapters two chapters are basically non-numeric chapters and the other eight chapters are going to be numerical numerical chapters so practical questions will be that you need to solve using figures now one more very important thing that i want to tell you one more very important thing I'll just change the color of the ink. Yes. One more very important thing. If you see chapter number three, marginal costing, then chapter number six, uh, standard costing, then chapter number seven, forecasting, budgeting and budgetary control. These three chapters are also present in paper eight cost accounting. So these three chapters are also there exactly these three chapters conceptually these three chapters are also there in paper 8 cost accounting but apart from what you learn in paper 8 cost accounting certain extra areas are also seen inside each of these chapters so don't think these three chapters ditto in paper 8 whatever is that exactly that only is there in paper 12 management accounting no whatever is there in paper 8 is definitely there in paper 12 apart from that apart from that in these three chapters certain extra areas are also there what it is we will be seeing in detail are you clear with this i'm just linking it so that when you are sitting if you are a person who is writing both the groups when you are sitting and preparing so you can link and study you can link and study in a single uh, study in a single sitting of preparation you can maybe cover these common areas between two these two papers that's why i am saying nevertheless everything will be started from the scratch if you are a person who is attending only margin uh, only paper 12 management accounting don't worry everything will be started from the scratch with every contextual background will be given are you clear with this so to put it short out of the 10 uh, out of the 10 uh, uh, chapters that you've got so the first and the ninth chapter are non numeric chapter the other eight chapters are numerical chapters then out of these 10 chapters four chapters have been introduced for the very first time in your cma inter level itself for the very first time and and out of these 10 chapters three chapters overlap with your paper 8 cost accounting clear so this is all about an overview an overview of this paper paper 12 management accounting and remember remember i would i it would be better if you maintain four color ballpoint pens i will tell you what it is blue color so this blue color is for running notes running notes then black ink black ink this is for question and answers question and answers so when you are actually solving all the question and answers once again in your house when you are once again after the lecture when you are doing it use the black color ink and solve all the question and answers then green color ink green color ink you can use this for headings that is that is when you are solving a particular question you are doing it alone no so you are going to practice all these sums once again 
So step one, what is the name of step one? For example, step one, calculation of cost. Step two, calculation of selling price. Just an example, the heading of the step that you write in green ink. Preferably, you write it in green ink and, and you use the red color ink for making any kind of corrections. So, so you use the red ink for corrections. Generally, when you are actually solving all the questions independently after you watch the lectures, maintain four uh, color ballpoint pens. Use only ballpoint pens. So preferably use ballpoint pen, ball pens, fine. Four ball pens you use, four ball pens. Blue color is for running notes. So what is running notes basically? If I tell some concepts or if I take some example and I explain which is not mentioned in your handbook or which I am not annotating here, which I am not annotating here in this uh, notepad that I am using. So certain things I will be explaining orally that is certain example just like that. And that example might you might actually feel that this example is very good for you to understand. You can maybe take a blue color ink and quickly scribble, scribble it down in a language you understand so that tomorrow when you are going to touch this concept once again for revision, this example, whatever you have scribbled down in a blue color ink will enhance. It will enhance your level of understanding of that particular concept. And black ink, you know, I told you, use that for solving all your numerical problems. And when you are solving the numerical problems, the heading should be in a green ink. And if you make any mistake, if you make any mistake, use a red color ink, use a red color ink to correct it so that one day before your exam, when you open this 400 pages ruled notebook and if you just, if you just revise it once, the red color areas will pop up and you know that when you originally solved, you made a mistake in this area. So the day before your exam, you don't have the time to turn 400 pages. Just like that, if you go through, this red ink areas will appear in front of you. And once that red ink areas appears in front of you, you know that this is a place I need to be very, very cautious about. And all these things, when will you be able to do? Only when you practice the sums independently after you finish the lecture, the respective lecture. Are you clear with this? Yes. So this, these are certain things that I wanted to tell you very, very importantly before we get into the subject. So this is a very practical subject a very logic driven subject filled with concepts. So we will start from the basics and our lectures will be 100% in English. Are you clear with this? Yes. So on that note, I'm concluding this lecture. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you all so much. Hey folks, welcome you all to a new video. This is CA Ganesh Bharadwaj. So in this video, we are going to officially get started with a brand new subject called as management accounting. So as per our institute study material, as well as as per our handbook, the first chapter that we are going to see is regarding the introduction to management accounting. Now, before I start, let me tell you one thing very clearly. So whatever I'm going to write here by way of annotation, and in fact, whatever I have already written in the previous lecture, so all of this will be given to you by way of a PDF. So technically speaking, whatever I write down here need not be copied down by you because anyways, a copy of this, a PDF copy, a soft copy of this will be given to you for your easy reference. So you just need to listen whenever I'm taking a particular concept, you just need to listen and ensure that you have an understanding. Of course, if there is something that I tell by way of an example that I've just not written down, maybe you can take a blue ink and quickly scribble in your notebook in order for you to get an enhanced understanding when you are going to revise the subject later on. Are you clear with this? Yes. On that note, let us get started with chapter number one, which is called as introduction to management accounting. Now, now. In our study material, this chapter is a theory chapter. They have mentioned so many things. They have literally mentioned so many things. And if you see, look, there are a lot of things they have mentioned. One second. I'm just going back to, yes, the first chapter here. Look at this. So there are so many things they have mentioned here. Fine, there are so many things. Like theoretically, they have just written down a lot of things. Anyways, anyways, I'm just not going to read down line by line. That's not the way this works. First, I want you to understand two things I want to tell you. Number one, just because the first chapter is more or less mentioned mostly in words, that is theoretically it's been explained. 
don't jump to a conclusion that this chapter this entire subject is a theory subject absolutely not the first chapter alone since it is an introduction they have given a lot of things a background how this started the evolution of management accounting what are the roles of a management accountant in a modern era all of these things have been explained don't worry it is not a theory subject that we are dealing it is actually a practical paper where a lot of numerical questions will be involved of course not in the first chapter but as we move on from second chapter onwards we'll be seeing a lot of numerical uh, concepts that is number one number two I am not going to read line by line what is given in chapter number one, that is the theoretical chapter introduction. Absolutely not. That is not the way it functions. If you were to read the material, you would have directly done it by yourself. Why rely on a lecture? So by way of a lecture, what we are going to do is I'm going to give you a value addition in terms of conceptual explanation, where we are standing, why we are going to learn this subject. All of this I will explain initially that is sufficient for you to enter into the subject, enter into the subject that is chapter 2 onwards. Nevertheless, I will also quickly run through what has been mentioned in the chapter 1 introduction, just so that even from an examination perspective, some theory questions, if they are asking, you will be able to handle. And chapter number 1 in terms of weightage carries 5 marks, okay. But beyond the weightage for me right now, we need to have a proper launching pad to enter into the subject. If I read line by line, you will also fall asleep. That is the maximum thing that can happen. But right now, I'm going to explain a few things right from what you know. And I will take you from what you know to what we are yet to know. Okay. So from the known to the unknown is what we are going to travel with respect to this subject. So on that note, let's get started. Now, what is the name of this subject? Management accounting. So basically, by the word itself, you know that this has something to do with accounting, correct? Now, now, accounting, accounting, let me just broadly classify, accounting, let me just broadly classify the different branches of accounting. So, but till now, if someone says accounting to you, you automatically jump to the conclusion that accounting means what? journal, ledger, trial balance, then you prepare your financial statements like profit and loss account, balance sheet. No, that is your financial accounting. There are multiple legs to accounting. There are broadly three classifications or broadly there are three branches of accounting that you need to know. So accounting is not just financial accounting. Accounting broadly has three classifications or three branches three disciplines, they call it as disciplines of accounting. Disciplines means multiple uh, lines, multiple streams of accounting are there. Of course, the one is financial accounting. Financial accounting. Then you have something called as cost accounting. And then you have something called as management accounting. Don't worry, I will explain everything. Management accounting. Okay, fine. So for short form purpose, we will call this as FA, financial accounting, CA, cost accounting, MA is going to be your management accounting. T-I-N-G, okay. Right. Now, there are three broad different, there are three different divisions in accounting itself. Financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting. Sir, why do we have these many types of accounting, classifications of accounting? Because each discipline or each branch of accounting has its own objective to achieve. Clear. So it is not like, sir, accounting is one. No, inside accounting, there are multiple aspects, multiple branches of accounting are there. Each branch has its own objective to fulfill. And that is the reason why we have different branches of accounting. Are you clear with this? In fact, in fact, in your CMA intermediate, all the three of these branches of accounting, you will be studying as multiple papers, as multiple papers. For example, Cost accounting is paper 8, no, specifically deals with cost accounting. Paper 12, this paper is management accounting. And yes, you also have a separate uh, paper for financial accounting also. 
correct so paper two or three i'm not very sure about it you have a separate paper for that also right fine so you will be studying you will be studying all the branches of accounting so first let us understand what each of these branches of accounting do that's when you will be able to appreciate the importance of management accounting what is the exclusive thing that management accountants generally do in their real life only if you know that you will be able to understand what we are going to do in this subject management accounting fine now first of all first of all financial accounting it deals with it records it records it records historical transactions it records historical transactions so what do you mean by this now only after a transaction takes place you first journalize it you pass a journal entry then it moves into your ledger then into your trial balance and then it enters into your financials that is p and l or balance sheet that is it's a post mortem exercise after a transaction takes place you account for it you account for it for example when sale happens you pass a sale entry purchase happens you part a you uh, you pass a purchase entry when you purchase an asset fixed asset you pass a purchase of fixed asset entry so here the objective is to record whatever transaction has happened so that you actually bring it you it boils down to debit and credit and properly present your financial statements ultimate objective in case of a financial accounting is to present the uh, financial statements to the end users that is the objective it has a separate objective clear fine whereas here here in if you see in case of cost accounting if you see in case of cost accounting it records it records historical historical as well as futuristic 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 or i can call it as estimated estimated transactions i will explain i will explain so so financial accounting exclusively records your historical transaction cost accounting records both your historical as well as your futuristic estimated transactions now in paper 8 cost accounting i would have explained i would have explained even if you have not seen uh, even if you have not studied paper 8 it's okay right now i am just giving an explanation that for example there is something called as overheads overheads means any other expenses apart from a direct expense indirect expenses are generally called as overheads so anything other than direct expenses which is called as indirect expenses is commonly called as overheads we use something called as predetermined rate that is budgeted rate based on budgets we actually you know may prepare the cost accounts why and all those details are a subject matter of discussion in cost accounting but i am just giving you an example so that even later on when you study cost accounting you will be able to relate or if you have already studied you will be able to relate it now so basically cost accounting deals not just with historical transaction it also deals with futuristic transaction you need to prepare some budgets and estimates based on that only the cost records gets prepared are you clear with this whereas whereas in case of a management accounting in case of management accounting technically speaking technically speaking it is it uses it uses both financial accounting data and cost accounting data that is management accounting has a very broader scope it has a very broader scope it uses the data utilized by financial accounting it also utilizes the data used under cost accounting that is present that is all the historical transaction future transactions not just that the reports presented under financial accounting the reports presented under cost accounting all of this are considered in this branch of accounting called as management accounting don't worry right now you might not be able to understand it fully why and all that there might be a lot of questions please patiently hear me out i will slowly introduce you to the subject so technically speaking management accounting as a branch of accounting is broader in scope it is huge in scope and i'll tell you what it is meant for now in case of financial accounting you know what financial accounting is meant for 
whom do you report it is technique it is basically meant for external reporting purposes correct external reporting purpose when do you mean by what do you mean by external reporting shareholders yes shareholders are external people they don't do carry out the day-to-day -day management the day-to-day -day management is carried out by the management you know the board of directors the top managers the employees in the company these are the people who are insiders in an organization anyone out uh, apart from the management people are called as external people outsiders only so shareholders shareholders then your government etc shareholders government etc so these people so for these people we need to if you are catering to the needs of external people so basically that is the scope of your financial accounting so financial accounting scope itself is to what present the financial statements to the external users external users of an organization because for example shareholders they need to know whether the company is making profit or not whether it is worthwhile investing in the company what is the balance sheet financial position of a company as on a date all these things for government obviously they need to know whether the company is properly doing this business and how much profit they generate so that out of that they need to pay taxes so each of the users have their own reasons for utilizing the for using the accounting information so catering to the needs of external stakeholders of the company is the domain of financial accounting you already know this fine when it comes to cost accounting when it comes to cost accounting mostly mostly i use the word mostly i'll tell you the reason mostly it is an it deals with internal reporting internal reporting in some cases in some cases external reporting external reporting is done external reporting is done within bracket that external reporting is also only done to the government i will explain this now now i will explain this once we move to the next point so understand right now cost accounting deals mostly with internal reporting in one case in some cases alone you will be needed you will be required to report to the government whereas whereas in case of a management accounting in case of management accounting it is only for internal reporting purposes it is only for internal reporting purposes fine i have not even told you what is management accounting but just wait i will tell you what it is once we finish this chart now now financial accounting maintaining your financial accounting records it is mandatory it is mandatory it is mandatory mandatory under what the companies act companies act income tax act etc income tax act etc so these acts these acts will exclusively ask specifically ask the company to mandatorily maintain financial accounting data so financial accounts needs to be maintained that is a mandatory requirement of government by way of through these legislations they make it mandatory now in case of cost accounting it is mandatory only for certain companies it is mandatory only for some companies some companies this is prescribed under the companies act this is prescribed under the companies act if you want to be more specific there is a section called section 148 of the companies act that clearly lists which kind of company should maintain the cost accounting data it will list the specific uh, manufacturing and mining related companies that needs to maintain cost accounting data so only those companies only those companies that are mandatorily required to actually maintain costing data will make an external reporting to the government other companies who are voluntarily following cost accounting uh, as cost accounting records these will actually 
those companies will only do an internal reporting. Internal reporting means what? Just to report to the top management, the board of directors, the managing director of the company. So only to them the reporting will be done by the accountants. But for that, to no one the reporting needs to be done. It need not go outside the company also. Clear with this. Only for those companies which are mandatorily required under the Companies Act to maintain a costing data, only to the, only in those cases that too the reporting will be done only to the government. You need not make the reporting to the other people like your stakeholders and all. You need not make. Now, management accounting, if you see, it is absolutely non-mandatory. Absolutely non-mandatory. It is absolutely non-mandatory. Meaning what? Even that some class of companies, no. There is no specific legal requirement for you to maintain cost accounting record, management accounting records. There is absolutely no legal requirement for a company to maintain their management accounting records. Now, this is where you will get a question. Sir, when it is legally required itself, many companies are not following it. For example, for example, a company is mandatorily required to uh, maintain financial records, correct? That itself, many companies are not practically, they are not doing it properly. Then management accounting, it is not even required. Then who will follow this, sir? That's where actually the subject becomes interesting. If you know why you are preparing the management accounting records, that is why you have the separate branch of accounting called as management accounting, you yourself will be convinced that there is no legal requirement for you. It is very much required for a successful management of a company. For a company to run successfully, management accounting is required. What is it is what I'm going to tell right now. First, let us place ourselves. Where I started, there are multiple branches of accounting. Financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting. Financial accounting deals with historic records, whereas historical transaction, cost accounting deals with historical transaction as well as estimated transaction, whereas management accounting actually uses data that is utilized by both the financial accounting as well as the cost accounting. It is broad in sp uh, scope. Clear? And of course, in case of a financial accounting, it's done only external reporting. That is the objective for you to prepare the accounts and report it to the outsiders of the company company since it is mandatorily required under Companies Act, Income Tax Act and other legislations. Whereas in case of cost accounting, it is mostly meant for internal reporting. Internal reporting means what? So the accountants will prepare cost accounting and they will actually, they will, costing records will be prepared and they will report only to the top boss of the company. Top boss is whom? The managing director. Clear? That's all. Only for internal purpose. Whereas here, and of course, in some cases where it is mandatorily required by the government, in those cases, in those cases alone, the reporting will be done. Apart from the internal team, the government will also be intimated. Whereas in case of management accounting, it is strictly internal, only for internal purpose. Top management alone, the reporting will be made. No reporting will be done to any outsider whatsoever. Now, sir, you have explained what uh, you, you what is the data utilized for each of the branches of accounting to whom the reporting gets done whether it's mandatory or not first what is management accounting that you have not explained no sir yes i'm going to explain right now when it is non mandatory when something is non mandatory why will someone go out of the way and actually prepare some accounting data for the purpose of achieving this management accounting system. Since management accounting records, why will someone maintain if it is not a mandatory requirement? Fine, that's where we are going to get started with this particular area called as management accounting. Management accounting. Now, what do you mean by, what do you mean by management accounting? It is that branch of accounting that provides, that provides meaningful information to the management. It is that branch of accounting that provides meaningful information to the management to help them take decisions in their organizations is called as management accounting. Clear, I'm not going to give a theoretical bookish definition. 
if you see accounting what do you mean by accounting recording classifying summarizing analyzing there will be so many big definition now forget all this this i will give you with a proper example so that you will be able to understand once again i am repeating what do you mean by management accounting it is that branch of accounting that provides information to the management to the management that helps them take meaningful decisions meaningful decisions so it is that branch of accounting that provides information to the management that helps them take proper meaningful decisions sir okay sir you have said something so basically your accounting data that that stream that branch of accounting that provides the information to the management what do you mean by management technically the top management the top management the board of directors of course in management you all know there is top management lower level management and top middle and lower level management there are three levels of management so basically all of them who are what do you mean by management in general people who actually run the day to day operations of a business these people employees put together is called as management generally management is a higher level job correct so any accounting data that provides meaningful information to the management that helps them take meaningful decisions proper decisions sir can you give us an example absolutely i will just give you an example and this concept the example that i'm going to give you involves some basic concepts that we will be seeing in a chapter called marginal costing even despite the fact i will just give you a small example it's easy for you to understand at this level itself and this will enhance your level of understanding before we enter actually into the subject clear fine let me just give you an example let me just give you an example now now i'm just giving you an example fine so example now now let us say let us say a managing director is present in a company managing director he represents the top management he is the top boss of the company you are the management accountant you are the management accountant that is you prepare you maintain management accounts you actually prepare the management accounting all these things in an organization you do so what do you do that's why we will uh, that's what we will be understanding by way of this example clear now he says he says look mr so and so mr management accountant so we are go we are very good at running the business we are extremely successful but suddenly what has happened some major recession happened in the market some major recession let's take an example there is going to be a covid lockdown a covid corona virus lockdown some lockdown is going to happen this lockdown is going to be there only for the next month one month alone one month alone the lockdown is going to be there now he says the managing director says he is asking you a party he wants to take a decision for this one month for this one month should we shut down the business that is we sh should we actually stop all our production or or should we continue the production this is only for one month this is not a permanent shutdown okay there is actually this is actually a concept in marginal costing called as shutdown or continue decision okay i am just giving that example right now so that you will understand what basically a management accountant does so he is asking you the company is very successful we have we see a very good future also the next one month alone government has sanctioned a lockdown of course our factory can be open they have given all the permission for our factory to be open the question is whether we want to shut down for the next one month is it worthwhile keeping the factory open and continuing our production for the next one month or should we also shut down and after one month shall we continue the business this is the uh, this is the management decision that he is posted with and he wants your help he wants to take your help in arriving at a decision what is the decision whether to shut down or continue in the next one month okay and the following are the data i am giving you the data so just try, just patiently listen to this following are the data now he says he says the next month demand next month demand 
let's say the next month demand is going to be 1000 units so he is saying this is the this is the estimate so you have got in touch with market analysis you have done so next one month even if we are continuing maximum demand can be for 1000 units okay the selling price per unit is going to be rupees 10 per unit okay now there is something called as variable cost variable cost per unit is going to be rupees 5 per unit i will explain what is variable cost then you have something called as fixed cost fixed cost is expected to be rupees 15000 per month next month the fixed cost is estimated to be 15000 rupees okay fine now 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 variable cost 5 rupees per unit fixed cost 15000 rupees per month basically what do you mean by a variable cost what do you mean by a fixed cost once i will just explain it to the extent relevant right now because i will explain everything properly when we get into this chapter called as marginal costing now variable cost means a cost that varies with the level of output that is only if i produce one extra unit i will be incurring this 5 rupees extra for example for example an example for variable cost can be raw material cost raw material cost if i produce one unit if i produce one unit i will be incurring 5 rupees of raw material cost suppose if i produce two unit then for the second units also one more 5 rupees will be incurred correct so 5 into 2 10 rupees will be the total variable cost total raw material cost that is the cost that is incurred or the cost that varies with the level of production is called as variable cost whereas what do you mean by a fixed cost the fixed cost is not dependent on your production and all irrespective of how many units you produce the cost 15000 will remain as such for example can i can say this 15000 could be a factory rent whether you produce one unit or you produce 100 units or you don't produce anything at all 15,000 rupees of monthly rent needs to be paid to the landlord, correct or not? Yes, so that is called as a fixed cost. A cost does, does, that does not vary with your level of production is called as a fixed cost. So now, this is the data you have got. This is the data you have got. With this data, you need to actually give a recommendation to your top boss, managing director. What is the question he has asked you? Whether it is worthwhile for me to continue the next month the next month should i keep my factory open produce 1000 units or should i keep my factory closed if i close my factory i will not produce anything this decision is only for a one month short term decision we are taking clear now after one month anyways i see a good market we are going to continue the question is for the next month alone what should we do now now and we this is the following cost data Selling price per unit is 10 rupees. Variable cost per unit is 5 rupees. Fixed cost in total is going to be 15 rupees. Now, if you see, if you see a normal accountant report, not a management accountant. If you see a normal accountant report. So, an accountant's report. I will tell you how it looks like. I will tell you how it looks like. If you see a normal accountant, what he will say, what is the big deal here? First, tell me what is the sales figure? Sales figure is going to be 10 rupees per unit next month. If I continue, every unit I sell, I will be able to get 10 rupees. And how many units we are going to sell? 1000 units, correct? So, a total sales will be how much? Rupees 10,000. Rupees 10,000, correct or not? Yes. Then, then what will be my total costs? What will be my total costs? Fine, it's very simple. Total cost is what? variable cost plus fixed cost so for me to actually keep my factory open and produce 1000 units what i will do 5 into 1000 i will incur 5 into 1000 rupees 5000 rupees i will incur plus i also need to pay a factory rent of how much 15000 rupees correct 15000 rupees so overall cost will be how much this is going to be rupees 20000 that is 5,000 plus 15,000 rupees 20,000. So, if I continue my production in the next month, what will be my, what will be my total profit? What will be my total profit? There will, it, the profit will be negative 10,000. So, profit means what? Negative profit includes negative profit. That is, there will be a loss or if you want, I can write within bracket loss. So, he will say, sir, 
so suppose you are a normal accountant not a management accountant so suppose you you, you are asked to you know advise the managing director you will say sir no sir you don't actually next month keep it shut down only why because you are if you if you continue if you keep your factory open produce 1000 units and sell it you will be incurring a loss of 10000 rupees don't do it clear so this will be this will be what this will be the decision that a normal accountant will give the normal accountant will say so decision he will say a normal accountant will say decision shut down he will say sir shut down sir please shut down because there is going to be a loss of 10,000 if you continue the business are you clear for the next one month after one month you continue that is not a problem next to one month you don't do business let us shut down the factory let us all go to our houses clear suppose if you are a management accountant if you are a management accountant how the report will be prepared i will tell you i will tell you this is a very good example not there in your study material and all i feel that this is the right way to actually learn the subject so if you were a management accountant and if you were a, if you were to prepare a report now i will tell you how you will prepare the report you will say sales how much 10 into 1000 units how much is that 10000 rupees perfect fine minus variable costs how much is variable cost 5 rupees per unit into 1000 units how much is that 5000 rupees correct minus fixed costs how much is the fixed cost it's directly 15000 rupees 15000 rupees there is no calculation how much is the profit or loss how much is the profit or loss profit or loss is going to be the same 10,000 loss sir are you kidding sir this person also accountant also said that is the same loss of 10,000 rupees you are also saying there is the same loss of 10,000 rupees what is the value addition as a management accountant you are giving wait now this manner you have given here as a total cost correct now I have split it into variable cost and fixed cost. This is where it will be able, to, it will enhance your decision making skills. I will tell you what. Now, if you were a management accountant, if I were a management accountant, I will present the data definitely not like this. This is a very bad way of presenting the data. I will present the data like this. What I will tell is, look, Mr. Managing Director. Now, next month, next month, if you continue the operations that is if you produce if you keep the factory open which means you're going to produce 1000 units 10000 rupees will be the sales variable cost will be 5000 fixed cost will be what 15000 so the net loss is going to be 10000 correct suppose if you shut down suppose if you shut down that is you are not going to produce anything how much will be the sales zero correct how much will be the variable cost variable cost will also be zero why variable cost is incurred only when you produce something correct now i'm not going to produce anything here variable cost will be zero how much will be the fixed cost fixed cost will i'll have to bear fifteen thousand rupees if i'm just shutting down for one month can i say can i say can i go tell my landlord that mr landlord i'm going to shut down my factory for one month so please i am not going to pay the rent he will not accept you are having all your machineries inside the place is occupied he cannot let it out to anyone so you need to pay the rent correct or not rent will be there if you continue what will be the loss what will be the loss 15000 if you continue the loss is going to be sorry if you shut down sorry if you shut down the loss is going to be how much 15000 if you continue the loss is just going to be 10000 or in other words if you continue you can at least minimize your loss by 5000 rupees in this case management in this case a management accountant will come and say sir i am giving you a decision or i i am proposing a decision it is better to continue it is better to continue with a loss of 10000 than to discontinue with a loss of 15000 rupees now you are able to understand how how a management accountant is able to come up with this data now what we did sir all the data was one and the same the manner in which you use utilize the accounting data to enable the top management in arriving at a meaningful decision 
is all that we are going to see in management accounting. The same 10,000 of loss only, that guy also reported, normal accountant. But what you did, you presented in a different way so that you can, you can actually weigh the pros and cons of multiple scenarios and arrive at a meaningful decision. This is where a management accountant comes in. Are you clear with this? So if you continue, so if you continue, if you look at this, if you continue, this is going to be a loss. There is going to be a loss of 10,000 rupees. If you shut down, if you shut down, there is going to be how much? A loss of 15,000 rupees. You tell me which is better. Continuing with a loss of 10,000 is better than discontinuing with a loss of 15,000. This way, this way. I just presented the same total cost as variable cost, fixed cost, so that I can appraise multiple scenarios and help the top management take meaningful decisions. Are you clear with this? This is a very, very basic thing that I've given you in management accounting. Don't think, okay, so we have completed management accounting. Absolutely not. We have just entered into it and I gave you one proper example so that you will be able to understand. Okay, so now this scope of accounting, this line of accounting called management accounting, it has something in it. It provides some value addition. You need to get an idea right at the introductory stage itself. So I don't believe in, you know, reading up all the theoretical thing. Ah, it helps in planning. It helps in control. It helps in, pro it helps in controlling, communicating, coordinating. No. First, let us understand by way of a numerical example. So now are you able to understand how management accountant was able to convince the managing director in taking a proper decision? Just imagine, suppose he had listened to the accountant and said, okay, let us shut down. In that case, if he is shut down, if he is shut down, you'd have incurred a loss of 15,000. Whereas if he had continued, you'd have incurred a loss of only 10,000. Extra 5,000 at least he could have lost, he could have prevented. Are you clear with this? This is where management accounting comes in. Now, in this case, I have just told you, uh, you know, in thousands we are just doing, but re remember in real life scenarios, in real life scenarios, it will be running in thousands of crores. Let's say in the same question, it's going to be rupees in crores. Just imagine if Mukesh Ambani was posted with the same kind of a problem, you as a management accountant, if you have advised him one month, you would have saved 5,000 crore rupees. It's not a joke. That's why, that's why if you go to your study material and if you see, if you go to your study material and if you see the cover page is there, no? So at the second page, if you see what Institute has mentioned here, if you see in the cover page itself, Clearly, there is a mention behind every successful business decision. There is always a CMA that is a tagline of our CMA Institute. So that is basically and CMA stands for what? Cost and Management Accountant. This is one of the most core papers in your syllabus. That's that's why this subject is very, very important. So now you tell me. Now you tell me, should this be a legally, this should be, should this be a legal requirement for a company to follow? No, all companies know the importance of management accounting. They don't want the, they don't want the government to come up with some laws to make this mandatory. They don't want the government to come up with law and legislation to make all these things mandatory. They themselves know the importance of management accounting just by having a proper management accountant in place. The companies can grow up the ladder they can actually take proper meaningful decisions this was one small decision in real life every day the top managing directors will be posed with multiple multiple real life uh, scenarios where they need to take a decisions who do you think they will approach of course a management accounting team will play a very vital role in advising the top management to take proper decisions so now are you able to understand the now are you able to understand what i mentioned here it is that line of accounting that provides information to the management that helps them take meaningful decisions are you clear with this so broadly speaking broadly speaking i'm telling you broadly have this in your mind so in um, you know, uh, in chapter one, exactly where this is mentioned, the study material, all those things, you don't ask me because all of these examples have just come up on my own. Clear. So now, broadly speaking, there are two objectives of management accounting. Two objectives of management accounting. Two objectives of management accounting. One is decision making. One is decision making. The other one is control. 
decision making and control broadly speaking every single chapter revolves around these two things only decision making and control broadly this is what a management accounting this management accounting helps you achieve the objectives of management accounting is decision making and control now now in uh, cost accounting if you have already attended my lectures on cost accounting i would have told you the objectives of costing are three that is stock valuation profit computation decision making control i would have told that i would have told that if you have not attended it's okay just know right now there technically speaking i would have also mentioned technically speaking the second and third objective decision making and control are not the objectives of cost accounting they are the objectives of management accounting that's why if you see there are three chapters called as marginal costing standard costing budget budgetary control these three chapters helps towards achieving the decision making and control objectives exactly those three chapters are also there in management accounting so these three chapters are there in cost accounting as well as management accounting of course in management accounting apart from what you have learnt in cost accounting area some advanced level issues will also be will be learning here in this paper are you clear with this so <coughs> technically cost accounting and management accounting are hugely interlinked that's why in the earlier version of the syllabus syllabus 2016 they had a single paper called as cost and management accounting for 50 marks so cost and management accounting are generally they go hand in hand they are very interlinked very very interlinked that's why in paper 8 strictly speaking the entire paper is not cost accounting some management accounting chapters are also hidden inside your cost accounting paper number 8 that's why the same chapters are once again appearing in your paper 12 management accounting so please know that the objectives of management accounting are broadly decision making and control are you clear with this fine so now sir how is it how does it help in decision making i told you right now this example i told you you we saw how it helps the management in taking a decision correct control what do you mean by control so basically having control over something means what you are knowing the state of affairs of a business and you are ensuring that everything is happening based on a target so what happens there is a chapter called budgets and budgetary control that we will be seeing i am just giving you a broad uh, overview of that what we will be seeing is targets will be set that is in the current period the company has to produce 10000 units the cost per unit should not exceed 10 rupees per unit all these things will be predetermined now what will happen the management accounting team will you know they will keep on be monitoring whether the company has achieved the target of 10000 units they will go get in touch with the production team they will say whether they will see whether they have produced 10000 units or not and they will also ensure whether the cost per unit has gone behind has gone beyond 10 rupees or not this is called as controlled so they will set some standards and they will compare the actuals with the standards and they will come up with the differences called as variances that's why we have another chapter called as standard costing and variance analysis they will set the standard compare that with the actuals and then any difference between the two difference is called as variance the variance will get analyzed and based on the differences if it is a favorable variance they will reward the employees if it is an adverse variance they will punish the employees for example 10 rupees cost they could have incurred now the team production team was so effective they only incurred 8 rupees now that is a favorable variance i like this variance reason Yes, instead of ten rupees, you have only incurred eight rupees. That will increase my profit. So what they will do is the management accounting team will compile all these things and report to the managing director. Obviously, these guys will be the people. The production team in this case will be rewarded. They will get some extra bonus or promotion and all of these things. Suppose they should have incurred ten rupees. They have incurred twelve rupees. In this case, they have it's an ad, it's called as an adverse variance. It is an adverse scenario. It reduces my profitability. We will be seeing that later on. in this case what will happen i will report the management accountant will report to the top boss of the company and of course they will take some uh, 
they will they will penalize the employees whoever are responsible for that the responsibility will be fixed and they will penalize the respective people that's why you have a separate chapter called responsibility accounting also see how interlinked it is so if you see all the chapters that we see here revolved around decision making and control control means what ensuring that the entire organization's objectives are going as per a plan you have a plan you compare that with the actuals and then any differences between the two needs to be properly addressed this is called as control broadly that to that extent it's relevant that it's enough right now so this objectives of this chapter is are two decision making and control are you clear with this so technically speaking that's about the introduction that's about the introduction now you tell me management accounting as a separate branch of accounting though it is not mandatory though it is not mandatory obviously it is very much important for the survival successful survival of any business so now even if it is not mandatory companies know the importance of management accounting and they have a separate management accounting team inside and this is strictly for internal purposes now whatever i did here this analysis this analysis now do you think this will be reported should this be reported to the shareholders or to the government why this is for successful running of business. It's meant for internal purpose. This should not even go outside the company. In fact, at times, these are all confidential data. This should not even go to the uh, go to the outside world because competitors are watching. They are looking at you. Correct. So all these things, in fact, costing and management data, CMA data, and all is very very. You know, it's it's technically at at, at times these are they are all some confidential data that should not be revealed. Certain cases, it should not be revealed to the outside world. Are you clear with this? Are you all clear with this? So that's about a proper introduction to this particular uh, subject called as management accounting. Now, now, and of course, you also know that the objectives, twin objectives of this uh, paper, decision making and control, always have this in your mind. Now, now, if you see here, certain chapters in our subject helps achieve decision making, marginal costing, applications of marginal costing, there are chapters like that, budgets to some extent, these all helps achieve decision making. Some chapters will help achieve control objective, standard costing. So there is some chapter called as standard costing. Then uh, you, have a, uh, you have a chapter called as transfer pricing and all. And that cha certain chapters like transfer pricing and uh, budgets and budgetary control, they help achieve both the objectives of decision making and control. So how and all, it's uh, too early to uh, see about all those things right now. As we enter into every chapter, I will first give you a background as to why you are learning it and then we will properly enter into the paper so that it will enhance your level of understanding in a very right manner. So technically speaking, this data, whatever we have seen right now is absolutely sufficient for you to actually enter into the second chapter and move into the subject. However, there are some theory part mentioned in our study material that I have kept it as such in our handbook. Okay. We will quickly go through it. Quickly, we will go through it. I'm not going to read line by line. We will quickly go through it from an examination perspective. Maybe some maximum five marks they might ask you by way of MCQs or fill in the blanks or by way true or false, whatever it is they might ask you. We will quickly run through what is given in the institute study material that I have kept in the handbook. We will see that also and then we will close this chapter, the first chapter introduction. Clear with this? Yes. So now let's get into Let's get into, so let's please take your handbook. I will just quickly walk you through what has been mentioned here in our uh, um, handbook. That is typically what is mentioned in our study material. So this is where the chapter begins, introduction to management accounting. Of course, I have highlighted a few points. That's okay. Anyways, that is for classroom discussion. I will explain that to you. One second. Right. First, let's start here. Let's start with this. Let's start with. Uh, yes, let's start with this. So please take page number 17, page number 17. So please take page number 17. First, we will see the difference between financial accounting, management accounting. Clear? Then we will see the difference between cost accounting, management accounting. I have just gave you an overview. Let's quickly do this so that in case an exam question comes up, you can be able to uh, tackle it. Clear with this? Yes. So let's get started. First, the basis for comparison. Okay. Purpose. Why you are having financial accounting? 
okay it classifies analyzes records summarizes the financial transaction of a company basically to present the financial statements and give it to the external users broadly this is the purpose clear they have given some words please don't think this needs to be mugged up don't ever no that is a very very wrong way of learning anything don't mug up anything read it once understand put it in your own language i'm talking about theoretical areas fine predominantly the subject is about practicalities we will be solving a lot of numerical problems don't worry this is not how the subject is going to be but for completeness sake i'm forced to do line by line not line by line forced to go through the theoretical part given in your study material also that i've kept in my handbook so please uh, we will do this strictly from an examination perspective but honestly speaking the introduction to the subject has already been completed but let us just go through a few things to give a completeness to this chapter number one introduction to management accounting whereas in case of management accounting it helps the management take effective decisions about the business i gave you one clear-cut example shutdown versus continue example i told you application financial accounting is prepared to give what a true and a fair picture of the state of affairs of the company that is the reason why you are having it whereas management accounting helps the management to take meaningful steps and strategize what next how am i going to run my operation the scope is completely different whereas in financial accounting whatever transaction has happened i need to provide it properly in i need to put it properly in financial figures and present it to the end users the objective itself is different sir do you mean to say management accounting is only good financial accounting is not that good absolutely not financial accounting has a different objective to achieve management accounting has a different objective to achieve don't compare the two for the sake of finding out which is better no it is not like which is better if something is better over the other then we'll only have the thing that is better no it's not like that these are like multiple fields these are like multiple fields financial accounting is required for a different purpose for external reporting management accounting is required for a completely different purpose that's why if you see in financial accounting you have formats you need to prepare necessarily your financial statements as per schedule 3 of the companies act correct your pnl account profit and loss account in a vertical format whereas management accounting there is no formats only it all depends on which scenario you are taking a decision today it's a shutdown versus continued decision tomorrow the decision could be whether to sell product a or product b any decisions how can you say only these decisions a company will be taking scenario wise you need to analyze the situation you need to take a decisions we will not be having any formats and structures here it's all about how you deal with the accounting data are you clear with this scope of financial accounting it is pervasive but not as pervasive as management accounting if you see here management accounting the scope is broader so financial accounting itself is broader but management accounting is even more broader it is even more broader clear it is like saying if you are bad i am your dad correct there is one movie dialogue something similar to that your management accounting is even more broader fine the information type so for financial accounting it is only quantitative absolutely we just deal with figures whereas in management accounting we'll be seeing it deals both with quantitative as well as qualitative quantitative means what financial data qualitative means non-financial data for example there is something called as learning curve effect and all learning curve means what suppose you have appointed one person today worker in a factory if you he is going to work for the very first time you ask him to produce one unit he will take let us say one hour okay now now one month down the line he would have become experienced you know one month of experience he had got now slowly now you go and analyze for every unit he will not be taking one hour he will only be taking 50 minutes slightly lesser time if you go after six months and see for every unit produced he will be taking only 40 minutes of time it's called a learning curve effect it's called a learning curve effect so these are all some qualitative factors that are also considered in our subject management accounting all of these things it is not considered in your financial accounting clear i just gave an example next interdependence financial accounting is not dependent on management accounting whereas management accounting <coughs> is basically decision making accounting see they have given the name itself it is decision making accounting and it depends on the information created by financial accounting and cost accounting i told this to you right here itself i told you at the beginning yes it is what it uses both the financial accounting data as well as the cost accounting data look we will be using all the data 
that we have any data we have it is required for the purpose of decision making because decision making is a broad perspective for you to take a decision right now you should have everything at your disposal all the data it needs to be you need to have all the data with you only then you can arrive at a meaningful decision it's not like just take one decision and leave it off no because every single decision has a financial impact on the business you can take hundreds and thousands of examples of company that has fallen because of wrong decisions taken that's the importance of, of having a proper management accountant in place if you see companies like reliance and all they will be having mukesh ambani will be having his personal advisor he'll be he'll be having his personal a personal advisor may whether he's a cma or not is a different story but what he does in his day to day activities is management accounting he has to evaluate multiple alternatives and come up with that best alternative that is best for the that is in the best interest for the company all these things are a scope of management accounting now for him to arrive at this decision he will use this past financial accounting data cost accounting data everything he will have Mr. Mukesh Ambani will give him access to everything based on all the data. He will take a proper decision and recommend it to Mukesh Ambani. That's how it happens. So don't think that CMA, sir, CMAs do not have as much signing powers as CAs. To be very honest, signing power alone doesn't determine your career. So there are multiple other aspects like decision making that you know needs to be done that has that requires a lot of acumen that requires a lot of intelligence and knowledge so it's not that only if you have a signing power you will shine well absolutely not now these people who are all management accountants at certain companies they treat management cma and ca at par yes they treat c chartered accountants and cost and management accountants at par if you see i myself have seen so many um, uh, job offers where they say required for the post of financial controller ca stroke cma so which means they are they are indifferent whether you are a ca or cma it's fine for us so they are going to test you on your analytical skills abilities and all that if you need to take a meaningful decision if you want to be a decision maker in an organization this subject the management accounting is going to be very very important fine statutory requirement financial accounting legally mandatory of course indian context it's going to be companies act in relevant rules of uh, accounting standards whereas in case of management accounting no statutory requirement format yes specific formats are prescribed in financial accounting no set of formats are there in management accounting who are the users of financial accounting data potential investors as well as all stakeholders basically external people here it's only and only and only for the management internal reporting financial accounting data is verifiable whereas whereas management accounting data is predictive and not immediately verifiable what do you mean by that financial accounting data it gets audited and all and it's a past data you can verify suppose sale for 5000 rupees of sale has happened you can see the sale voucher verify it correct whereas in management accounting you cannot verify you are going to take a decision whenever there is a decision making element involved which means what you take before a transaction happens or you take a decision after a transaction happens you take it only before correct now right now in this example itself i told you the company wants to see where they are going to stand where in the next month next month whether to continue or to shut down is the question so we are dealing with futuristic demand next month will it exactly be 10000 1000 units will it exactly be the demand i don't know we do not know that is a maximum prediction the prediction alone we are making here we are talking about futuristic decision making here are you clear with this now how do you know that sir next year 1000 units will be the demand next month the 1000 units will be the demand maybe for me to arrive at the predictive figure i used the past data the last year generally during this month what would have been the demand for the past 5 years i would have analyzed and i would have also adjusted for the covid issue and all that and i would have arrived as a prediction so this cannot be immediately verified this is predictive and it cannot be immediately verifiable are you clear with this so have the knowledge have a conceptual knowledge and automatically all these points you can write it on your own are you clear with this if you sit and start mugging up i am sorry that's not the way it works clear so have a right perspective and start practicing by way of conceptual understanding in the subject fine next next we are going to see the difference between cost accounting and management accounting we will see it here so they have given all these things all this explanation is given it's not required directly let's get into the tabular column 
meaning of cost accounting. Cost accounting revolves around cost computation, cost control, cost reduction. There's something called as cost sheet that you prepare. In that cost sheet, you will actually find out what is the cost per unit, total cost. What is the say, uh, what is the say, selling price per unit? So total sales value. The difference between sales and cost is going to be the profit. So all these things you just find out. It's about cost, uh, cost. Uh, you know, it's about cost computation. That is, you measure your costs. You have multiple components of cost like material, labor, overheads, and all of those things. It's a subject matter of discussion under cost accounting. Basically, cost accounting revolves around stock valuation and profit computation. That is the basic objective. You will be seeing it there in cost accounting. So you need to value every unit of your stock. That is your objective and arrive at the profit. That's all. That's all it is. Whereas management accounting, it helps the management make decisions effective decisions, meaningful decisions about the operations of a business. Application of cost accounting, it prevents the business from incurring costs beyond a budget. Okay, that's why I said, sir, you told me, sir, this is control aspect. This is also there in management accounting. You told, that's why I said, cost accounting and management accounting are highly interlinked. That's why even in CA Inter also, there is only a single paper called cost and management accounting put together. Earlier, old syllabus of CMA was also Cost accounting, manage, cost and management accounting, single paper for 50 marks. Right now, they have made it separately. They have made it separately. Management accounting has been introduced as a separate paper. So, there also, to some extent, this was there. This is there. That is, prevents the business from incurring costs beyond a budget. Management accounting offers a big picture of how the management should strategize. So, here also, you prepare budget, not just the budget. You compare that with the actuals and you will also, management accountant will also come up with ways as to how you can improve or strategize your business. The scope of cost accounting is narrow, whereas management accounting is broader. It is cost accounting has only quantitative factors, whereas here it involves both quantitative and qualitative. I told you that learning curve example and all. Then management uh, cost accounting is one of the many subsects of management accounting, meaning what? Management accounting is broad. Inside a management accounting, only cost accounting itself is there. That's how they are representing it here. Whereas your management accounting is the universal set. Okay, that is broader in scope. This is slightly lesser broader. Fine. Basis of decision making. The task of decision making in cost accounting is very less. Even if there is some, it is based on historical information. Whereas this subject is all about decision making. Historic and predictive information is the basis of decision making. I told you. For the next month, how did they arrive at 1000 units is going to be the demand based on past data, past data in this month. In the next month is going to be, let's say some month, Jan, Feb or whatever the Feb month is going to be the next month. Now the next month, based on the past data, every February for the last five years, what has been the average demand they will find out. Now this month added, there is one extra feature called COVID. Because of that, how will be the impact? How will be the impact? They would have done all these things and arrived at a predictive demand for the next month of 1000 units. That's why they are saying here, look at this, historic and predictive information is the basis for management uh, decision making. See how practically we are learning it. That's the way to learn. Please don't mug up anything. Statutory requirement, statutory audit of cost accounting is a requirement in some specified industries. I told you, you know, section 148 of the company's act. That section is not required for our subject purpose, but you can know it for for the purpose of understanding, so broader understanding, yes. So sec there is a, some a section called a section 148, cost audit. Costing records needs to be mandatorily audited by a qualified cost CMA, cost and management accountant, and reported to the uh, government. There's something called a CRA rules alone that needs to be made in, but here, in case of management accounting, there is no such statutory requirement at all. And dependence, cost accounting is not dependent on management accounting, whereas management accounting is dependent on both the cost accounting and financial accounting data. And cost accounting is used for management, shareholders, vendors. Now, somewhere I differ with this. I differ with this point. No, cost accounting is used only for management and wherever regulatory requirement is there, you will report it to government. But they have mentioned shareholders and vendors and all. I have not seen any company that have uh, that has actually you know gone to the outside world and presented their cost related factors because cost related factors are very very uh, confidential. So if you know per unit how much profit the company is making, just imagine, just imagine, can this data go to the public? Then they will start knowing that you will not believe in case of textile industries and all. 
the cost of manufacturing a particular shirt will only be 50 rupees they will put some brand and they will sell it at 500 rupees 450 rupees per shirt profit now all this data will be there only in cost accounting cost accounting because product wise they maintain all this cost sheets properly and all if this has been released out to the public then the public will get really angry no one will buy your products but all they do is only financial accounting data has been mentioned there they mentioned overall profitability product wise and all they will not mention the company must be dealing in so many things so all that entire consolidated profit will be mentioned apart from that any common cost everything will be going on there so financial accounting external reporting is fine cost accounting external reporting generally does not happen but anyways they have just given it let's take it and your management accounting is meant only for the purpose of management are you clear with this so the difference between financial accounting and management accounting the difference between cost accounting and management accounting we have seen till now clear so management accounting involves the interpretation of accounting information intended specifically to aid the management in running the business this is exactly what we said interpreting the accounting information specifically for the purpose of meaningful decision making that's called as management accounting it is concerned with presentation of the accounting information and not with its preparation so here we are not going to prepare the financials all the data is given for us every data is given the question here is how do you present it properly in such a way that it helps you take a meaningful decision and how do you arrive at how do you aid the management aid means what support how do you support the management in proper decision making so accountant also reported the same uh, loss only whereas management accountant also repaired reported the same loss but the breakup of the overall cost into variable cost and fixed cost made the difference here are you clear suppose scenario wise i could analyze and i can clearly come up with a proper decision are you clear with this this is where we are actually having an extra value addition in management accounting are you clear with this guys yes next next the role of management accountant in modern business fine so now let's quickly run through this so apart from whatever we have done so basically what are all the roles of management accountant in a modern business world so tomorrow you're going to become a cma Fine, in future, you're going to become a CMA. So what are the roles that typically revolve around a management accountant? First, planning and accounting. Accounting means what? Management accounting. That is, whatever data is given, presenting it in a manner in which it is helpful for the business to take decisions. And of course, planning part, like budgeting and all of these things, you need to come up with proper regular time to time at regular intervals you need to tell the management where they are going wrong what what can be fixed for the next six months this is how we need to go all these kind of planning and accounting related work you need to do of course controlling aspects should be taken care of by the management accountant reporting regularly you need to report to the top boss of the company correct you need to report to the um, uh, to the managing director or the board of directors or maybe even the top management in some cases yes you need to assist the top management in finding out the root cause of unfavorable operations in case there is an unfavorable operation we saw that in the shutdown versus continued decision that was an unfavorable area so you need to clearly tell them the accountants report is wrong look at this is the scenario wise analysis i am making management accountants report now that makes more sense reporting coordinating obviously it's not an easy task so if you see big companies like itc or reliance itself you take no so just imagine the volume of reliance they have so many departments under their uh, kitty they have there's so many departments under the company now a management accounting sitting on the top needs to coordinate with all these people see whether the uh, whether the company is actually moving in the right direction or not whether it is going as planned or not so it's not a one man show it's not a one man show there will be an army of management accountants sitting inside that particular line of discipline of accounting called management accounting and they will be taking all this uh, part so coordinating is an important task then of course communication so look at this a wide range of reports need to be prepared for every decision that you take it needs to be backed up with the report because today you take a decision after two years now your managing director comes and asks you now two years back i took one decision based on your advice only that i remember but why did I take this decision? Why did you advise me uh, like that? So now if we ask you that, of course, you can show him the report and clearly tell him that, look, sir, this was based on this report. At that point of time, we had predicted so many things, but later on, things went on well or didn't go on well. So based on the report, you can also answer. So reports are all, always a prerequisite here in management accounting. So it's not like just 
uh, you know, randomly, orally, you'll say, sir, go for this, go for that. No, you need to come up with a report and clearly tell him what it is. Clear, communicate the results to the superior by way of wide range of reports. Fine, financial evaluation and interpretation. So the financial data needs to be properly evaluated. It all boggles down to the same thing. Whatever we did in the shutdown versus continue example and interpreting the results and telling them, sir, whether to shut down or to continue. Tax administration, of course. This is a very broader scope in case uh, even the financial accountants also do this basically. So paying month, uh, monthly TDS or quarterly advance tax payments. Look at this quarterly tax payments made in advance. So adhering to the tax loss, not necessarily always a management accountant does. Even a financial accountant or a normal accountant can also do. Then evaluation of external effects. If there is a change in the government policy, suppose lockdown was planned for 15 days. Uh, for one month, they have reduced that one month lockdown to 15 days. Immediately, changes in government policy, you need to rework, arrive at a new decision based on the effective change right now. Correct. So, all these things you need to keep your ears and eyes open throughout wherever you go. Economic appraisal. Economic appraisals. The government makes regular announcement about the company's economic situations and management accountants is interested with making the economic study and determine the influence of current economic conditions the company's operations. There is an inflation or is there going to be a recession? If there is a recession, we need to lay off so many employees. If there is going to be an inflation, then how best we can make use of that to the company's advantage? All of this is a management accountant's work. Economic appraisal. Asset protection, obviously. So, you have a company is made up of what? Assets, right? So, you have so many machineries, you have so many assets, buildings, whatever it is. At the end of the day, it is also the responsibility, not an exclusive responsibility. It is also the responsibility of the management accountant to ensure that all the assets are properly used effectively for the best interest of the organization. So, theoretically, they have mentioned all these things. Separate fixed asset registers for each type are maintained and proper internal checks and controls to protect the company's assets. It's all these things have been mentioned here. Clear with this? Yes? Fine. Now, management accountant and the modern business world. So, they have just mentioned here. So, now you know that there have been a lot of changes, a lot of changes, technological advancements. It is not the same as it used to be before. Even in, even in fact, you know, uh, the internet that we use today, the internet that we use today, maybe 25, 30 years back, no one would have even heard about this word called internet, correct? Just 20, 25 years back, just imagine. That is the kind of world we are living, living in. The changes are high. The changes are highly dynamic. Now, it needs to be adapt. You need to adapt yourself to multiple situations. So, under these circumstances, there has been a paradigm shift in the role of management accountant in the era of globalization. So, what do you mean by globalization? They call the entire world is a global village. Now, it's not like if you are living in India, you can do business only in India. No, nothing of that sort. Globalization is what the entire world is being connected throughout right now. So, the trade barriers have been, listed, uh, have been removed. And even if you're sitting in India, you can do business in the US or in the Europe or you can do anywhere in the other rest of the world. So, now the focus is shifted to strategic analysis. So, multiple strategies will come up before the business. Each of these strategies should be properly analyzed. What I gave you here as an example for shutdowns is uh, continues a very simple example. In real life, there could be so many strategies that needs to come up and the companies, the mass management accountant, you need to advise to the top boss of the company or to the board of directors of the company. They need to get a proper advice on strategic analysis. I have just blocked it here, put it in block here because I think there is some fill in the blank questions and all related to this. So I've just blocked it here. So only this part alone. So there is something called as fill in the blanks that is applicable for your exams. What they do is suddenly they will just give one sentence inside uh, this entire chapter. One sentence they will say and they say the focus has shifted to dash. So they will explain the previous sentence and they will say the focus has shifted to dash. Dash you need to write strategic analysis. Now you might think sir line by line should I read everything? No, no, no. That's why fill in the blanks alone is generally like this. Fill in the blank questions are alone. I think for four or five marks, they will test the entire paper itself, four to five marks only if it comes from this chapter. So only the fill in the blanks that are there, you just read it automatically. That will be sufficient. 
don't go word by word in and waste your time that that thing itself is not even relevant that's not required overall understanding fill in the blank separately you just deal with it and that will be the end of the story clear with this from with respect to exam preparation fine so now the shift as a management accountant you need to move into strategic analysis and fine let me just get into this uh actually there were multiple stages in which management accounting evolved it didn't happen overnight there is multiple stages i will walk you through that there are four stages through which management accounting came into picture so right now after whatever globalization has happened the third stage is often referred to as a period of lost reference lost relevance what is the third stage we will see in a few minutes from now we will just be seeing clear with this fine now here we will now see the impacts of new business environment on management accounting so right now we are living in an era of globalization so what is the impact of new business environment on a management accountant first you need to face the global competition it's not just india right now you need to face competitions in the outside world you can do business in outside countries similarly the other countries can also do business in india right now we are going to deal with global competition it's not just restricted to indian indian subcontinent alone correct so you will be posted with global competition changes in product life cycle what do you mean by a product life cycle every product has a period it has a tenure it has a life cycle initially initially it will be in the growth stage it will be struggling it will be struggling to enter that is it will be in the beginning stage then it enters into growth stage it enters into growth stage and beyond the point it will grow it make a lot of money it enters into the saturation stage saturation means what now you've already captured the market beyond this some new entrants will come in some new people will come in new competitors will come in and then finally there will be a decline there will be a decline for example a real life example google initially when google started that was a time i think about 1999 or 2000 google started in a phase where internet itself was was not known much to the public correct so at that point of time initial two three years they are struggling a lot of course no, none of us even would have heard of the word google back then just imagine many of you would not even many of us would not even be born at that point of time so basically <coughs> basically it was just struggling to enter then slowly it saw a growth and then people everyone started knowing google and google like literally it's nailing it it's killing it it's gone a growth stage right now looks like there is a saturation point why there's something called as chat gpt that has come some new artificial intelligent tools have come now it's giving a tough competition recently even google came up with one uh, announcement that they are uh, sacking they are actually laying off 14000 employees or something like that so look at this a saturation point beyond a point that could also be a decline it will fall instead of google some new competitor might also come this is called as a product life cycle every product has a life cycle it has to go through no product is permanent then sir i can see companies that are uh, that are that are been existent for 100 years companies like itc and all this for 100 years no it's about product life cycle they keep on changing the products it's not the same product that they actually manufacture 100 years back whatever product they were dealing in is it the same product they are dealing they make some improvisations they introduce new products they you need to be very creative there that's why changing product life cycle this should be one of the factors that a management accountant needs to be um, you know very aware about then advances in manufacturing technology you should be aware of the latest advances in manufacturing technologies some internationally reputed manufacturing companies have responded to these by replacing the traditional production systems with lean manufacturing systems that seek to reduce waste by implementing just in time production systems focusing on quality simplifying the processes and focusing on advanced manufacturing technologies amts this was also another fill in the blank question that was asked i will explain now now what happened there are new manufacturing systems that companies are adopting there is something called as jit jit what do you mean by jit just in time now now generally what people do is what companies used to do before the industrial revolution and all what they used to do is they produce and store everything they first to produce and then what happens whenever the demand comes they will sell so they will produce and then they will try to push it to the market they will push it to the market make people buy 
right now what companies are doing is they are not doing this the what they are doing is once let the customers come and approach me let the customers come and approach me only after i get a demand i will start my production this is similar to if you go to if you go to uh, you know uh, a restaurant if you go to a restaurant or a small shop okay a roadside shop and if you ask that particular shopkeeper to give you a dosa you know only after he gets the order he will actually heat the dosa pan pour the you know the batter and he will prepare the dosa and give you correct that is called as just in time system only when a demand comes the production will start and you will honor your customer it is not like it is not like they will prepare and keep and whenever someone comes they will give it no correct this concept is called as just in time see everything the costing and management accounting concepts are all there in our real life it's all there around us it's all there around us just that if you get the perspective right you can look at the big picture and appreciate what the subject is all about are you clear with this so reduce their uh, so lean manufacturing is called as lean manufacturing system they reduce their waste by implementing just in time so suppose he has produced everything and kept the shopkeeper he has prepared five ten, ten dosas he has prepared only eight dosas he was able to sell two dosas what will he do he'll have to waste it up correct so the instead of instead of doing this maybe maybe what he will do is once he gets an order he will start preparing it so this is an effective waste reduction strategy focusing on quality and simplifying the processes and focusing on advanced manufacturing technologies technologies amts so big companies they come up with latest technologies artificial driven tools and all that fine in fact there was one company an automobile company that said we are going to have a factory that is 100% manless meaning not even a single human being will be sitting inside the factory it's all going to be robots fine these are all some advanced manufacturing technologies clear the impact of information technologies that needs to be considered then the environmental and sustainability issues it's not that it's not that just if you focus on profit you will be successful some top companies like tata tata group if you see they are very much concerned about the society so social factors also needs to be uh, considered look at this management accounting with specific focus on environmental issues is becoming increasingly important in organizations as the environmental costs are large in many organizations it's like polluting the rivers or coming up with a lot of pollutants in the smoke in the factory these are this might look at some silly things for you right now may sir what is the big deal about this but when you get into the business you will start understanding or when you be a part of a bigger organization you will start understanding how much impact this has on the business itself you need not be such a nice person to think about the uh, to society even even as a businessman some people will start nowadays they have started becoming more environment conscious because there could be so many things environmental costs are often very high fine regulatory requirements impose huge fines if you do for non compliance and companies are increasingly realizing that being socially and environmentally responsible improves their image and this has a positive impact on their bottom line bottom line means what profit top line means sales bottom line means profit okay so so it improves a very good image of the company you know as a businessman they themselves are realizing about all these things are you clear with this yes then deregulation privatization what do you mean by deregulation privatization earlier back some 50 years back and all every single thing was restricted by government everything was owned by the government even if you see banks were all maintained only by the government so it was all government owned bank government run banks so now what they have done they have deregulated regulation means what actually bringing within the control of the government deregulation means what they have just removed the controls so right now deregulation that is the government has removed their stake in many companies or they have come up with privatization so they are encouraging people to start up their own ventures it's completely privatized so now this is a good thing right of course it's a good thing for people to come up with their own innovative ideas but remember this will also increase the competition because you are not the only one with those ideas there could be so many people who come up with these ideas these things needs to be considered properly so that for in order to arrive at meaningful decisions in an organizations so this is what is being given here and the focus has shifted to what value creation if you do not create value to your customer no one will even turn back at you a prime example is apple 
So how is Apple thriving even till date? How is it thriving till date? The Apple iPhones are like too expensive and still people are crazy of that because of only one thing they focus on. It's called as value creation. Value creation. A person who owns an Apple mobile, he feels so great of owning this. Why? They focus on the values. How, how can I uh, make a value addition to my customer? That's what they focus. Of course, as a management accountant, if you're a management accountant of a company, this thing also needs to be taken into account. Customer orientation. Of course, at the end of the day, a customer is the king and he his priority the customer's priority or customer satisfaction should be the top of your objectives so only if you are able to satisfy your customers will you be staying in this business throughout are you clear with this fine so these are some points mentioned theoretically so once again you just quickly go through it once we finish this lecture you just quickly go through it it's very very important fine you just quickly go through this so if you see here uh, yes so we did this here Fine. If you see all these things, all these things that we have mentioned here theoretically. So what is the impacts of new business environment on management accounting? And if you see here, management accountant, uh, the roles of management, the functions of a management accountant, it's been mentioned here. We saw this fine and the differences, all these things. So you just go through it once. You need not mug up anything. Go through it once. That will be sufficient. Now, First, uh, first part of this chapter, theoretically, we have not seen it. Let me just walk you through that so that you get a complete understanding. Let's have a proper completeness in this particular chapter. So once again, I will just start with the initial part. Yes, fine. So now you can just take this page number six. That's where the first chapter begins. I will just quickly walk you through and then we will do a few uh, questions like MCQ questions and all that just so that the first chapter in terms of completeness is over. Fine. So conceptual understanding. So they have given a lot of background, a lot of, uh, you know, theoretical explanation is given from an examination perspective as well as for practically understanding the subject. Not much of not much of relevance. Anyways, I'm just walking you through. So they have just mentioned accounting is primarily the process of once again. Uh, I will just change the color of my pen. Yes. Accounting is primarily the process of keeping records of financial transactions. It is the language through which the organizations can communicate to the external world. Look at this. They have just mentioned a few things here. Like Warren, Warren Buffet gave a, val a valuable advice to a 17 year old. He referred accounting as language of business. All these things they have mentioned. So only the relevant part I'm just going to walk you through. It is important to note that the users are either internal that is the managers or the internal people. Technically, when I say internal people, it's only the management, fine, uh, or the external. The users could be internal. They are talking about accounting, not management accounting. General accounting, they are just mentioned. Look at this. They have only said accounting. So accounting users could be internal or external, correct? So basically, if you see owners or investors, they are they are looking for what they use the accounting data to come up with to know the profitability of the financial strength of the company profitability through p and l financial strength to your balance sheet management they want to make some internal decisions for that they use accounting decision by accounting i mean financial accounting or cost accounting or management accounting they are just being very uh, they are just being very broad here they are not being very specific creditors why do they need accounting information to take short term as well as long term position of the company that's why you know the credit worthiness of the company regulatory agencies income tax department gst department why do they need to know tax assessment and how well the business are operating under the regulatory framework that is how compliant they are compliance purpose government government in general for compiling statistics how many companies how much how many companies are there in our country and how many companies are unicorn startups you know what is unicorn startups so a company that has a valuation of one billion dollars or more is called as a unicorn startup so how many companies are like that so so many things so many parameters for compiling statistics the government might use apart from apart from the taxation aspect and the regulatory aspect that's why they have technically speaking both are the part of government only they have segregated the regulatory agencies separately and government separately clear potential investors why do they need the accounting information for finding out gauging the investment opportunities employees why do they need it so if because they might be interested in knowing the earnings of the enterprise because their remuneration might depend on the quantum of profits researchers to do some research fine they need some accounting information look this is not exhaustive there could be so many other users of financial data they have just mentioned it here so it is obvious from the above that the accounting information need of management the accounting information need of management is different from others 
the management encompasses the range of activities involved in running an organization broadly there are three levels of management top level that is the board of directors middle level the managers lower level that is the workers generally fine through the financial information need of the three levels fine though the financial information need of the three levels varies but the essence is similar what is the essence decision making so broadly speaking though there are so many users of financial information we saw employees researchers government regulatory bodies your um, creditors management you have your owners of the company all these people are there but management's requirement of data is slightly different that's why we have a separate branch of accounting called as management accounting with an objective of what decision making and control i told you that decision making and control the top level management is entrusted with the critical task of making effective and efficient decisions which is reflected in the company's performance and is measured in terms of profit and market share so that's why even our cma institute says behind every successful decision there is always a cma are you clear there are three branches of accounting financial accounting cost accounting management accounting fine and this categorization is based on the presentation legal requirements financial information that is required for each of these categories of branches of accounting clear that's what we saw and management accounting is concerned with the provision of accounting information to the people within the organization within the organization internal users typically the management to help them make better decisions and improve the effective efficiency and effectiveness of existing operations so it is often related to what management accounting is often related to internal reporting are you clear with this so what is management accounting many people have given their own definitions fine but you should know basically it is presenting the accounting information in such a way that helps the management take meaningful decisions and enhance the control in an organization that's what it is i've explained it practically of course theoretically they have given some uh, they have given in the material they have given some definitions the management is all about running an organization management is about running an organization in consonance with your strategic goal consonance means what at par at par with your strategic goal <coughs> accounting may seem to encompass any of the activities that attempt to gauge the performance of the organization so gauge means what so validate so how good the company is performing correct in the sense account management accounting includes production of all the information useful in running the organization so any information presenting an information in a manner it uh, in a manner useful for taking decisions is called as management accounting if you see the day, the information provided can be financial or non financial it can be accurate or broadly correct why broadly correct you're talking about futuristic data you cannot say accurately it will be exactly next one demand will be 1000 i cannot say it can be 990 or it can even be 1050 i don't know broadly correct it's a calculated guess correct then as as actual or estimated yes based on past or future so like that they have just given all these things the information How, the nature of information used in management accounting all of the all these things are mentioned here are you clear with this so they have just mentioned here and remember there is something called as a body called as cima what do you mean by cima c i m a chartered institute of management accountants this is globally this is globally acclaimed as the global uh, cma body so just like how you have icmai in here in india you have the institute of cost and management accountants of india you have similarly the london version of our cma institute is called as cima c i m a chartered institute of management accounting it is the number one institute in the field of costing and management accounting fine so they have official they have something called as cima official terminologies they define a lot of things they state that management accounting is the application of principles of accounting and financial management to create protect preserve and increase the value of stakeholders of for profit or not for profit enterprises in the public and private sectors basically what is this providing some accounting data in a manner that helps the management to take meaningful decisions in their organization of course the objective is also about control clear fine so they have just given so many thing it requires identification generation presentation interpretation and use of relevant information to inform the strategic decisions formulate business strategy plan long term medium term short run operations determine the capital structure 
design reward strategies, inform operational decisions, control operations. They have just mentioned a lot of things broadly. It boggles down to two objectives, decision making and control. That's all you need to know. Clear with this? Fine. Now, now there are multiple people, individual people. They give their own definition. So now one such person is called as Colin Drury. Colin Drury is a very, very famous professor and an author in the field of cost and management accounting. Even I refer his books for so many examples. He is supposed to be a very, very elderly person. It's a very old person now. So he has come up with his own books on uh, uh, cost and management accounting. So he states that management accounting combines the accounting, finance and management with leaning edge techniques leading edge techniques needed to drive successful businesses. So he has mentioned, he has given his definition and what it involves, advising managers about financial implications of project, explain the financial consequences of business decisions, formulate business strategy, monitor the spending financial control, conduct internal business audits, explain the impact of competitive landscape, bring a high level of professionalism and integrity into business. So what it involves broadly, he has explained again and again, I'm telling you, broadly it involves it revolves around what so providing an information to the top management that helps them in two objectives decision making and control you just have that in your mind these are all some theoretical aspects that is given in your study material clear fine and uh, <clears throat> so management accounting again refers to presentation of accounting information to the management by the management accountant in such a way to assist them with their managerial decision uh, making planning and control this is exactly what i said correct so they have just given this and the purpose of management accounting is to assist the management in running the business in ways that will improve the performance of the business. Now, if you look, they have just given similarly right now itself, you've seen multiple definitions of management accounting. Well, a few more definitions, a few more people, Garrison and Noreen, these people, these two people have come up with their own definition. Wilson and Way, they have given their own definition. Johnson and Kaplan, they have come up with their own, uh, uh, their own definition. And look at this, Ongren, Datter and Ranjan, Ranjan or Rajan, they have come up with their own, uh, um, you know, definition for management accounting. So all these things you can quickly go through, but beyond this, there is not much of a relevance here. Next, next. So based on all these things, one thing that you know, look, this is actually a next paragraph. The above mentioned definition put forward by the authors sums up the discussion of what management accounting is. There have been some significant changes in the last few decades. So last few decades, like global competition is there, deregulation, government has stepped out. They want to privatize everything, growth in service sector, decline in product life cycle. There are so many things that are involved. These changes have significantly altered the way in which firms operate, which in turn has resulted in changes in management accounting practices. Clear? So this has resulted in companies making customer satisfaction as an overriding priority and to focus on identifying and achieving the key success factors that are necessary to be successful in today's competitive environment. So basically right now it all bogs down. I told you customer is the king. Customer satisfaction is the overriding priority, top most priority of any business. Clear with this? Fine. So now the scope of management accounting, it's all mentioned here business uh, budgeting planning forecasting measuring organizational divisional per departmental performance so all these things broadly it bogs down to your decision making and control you name all the chapters it will come here as the scope of management accounting look at this budgeting planning forecasting name of a chapter divisional performance that's basically your uh, you have a chapter called as transfer pricing we'll be seeing that even there's a separate chapter called performance evaluation and all of that fine so all these things they have just mentioned for theoretical purposes, calculating the profitability of multiple products, allocating cost of products, interdivisional transfer prices, there's a chapter called transfer pricing. So all these things, they have explained it in a much detailed, uh, you know, theoretical manner. Mm, you can just go through it once. There is no point in me reading it line by line. Now, this part, this part, they have asked this particular part, evolution of management accounting. This is basically the history of how management accounting started. This part, they have tested a few, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in your MCQs, multiple choice questions, true or false, as well as in your uh, fill in the blanks. Some aspects have been involved here. Let us just quickly look at this. Management accounting is an offshoot, mean what? 
it's a product it's a product it has come only from financial accounting and it has specific linkages with cost accounting this is why i said it is highly interlinked with cost accounting look it's there in the study material itself all these wordings are study material wordings i have not changed anything financial literature suggests that the beginning of management accounting is linked with the requirement of accounting information to optimize the economic resources during the industrial revolution in the united kingdom so we are just going back to history so how this all started only during the industrial revolution in united kingdom so the management accounting that we are studying right now was not that maybe some 80 90 20, 100 years ago it was not at all there it is relatively a very recent development in the line of accounting itself clear with this now there is something called as international federal accounting federation ifac so they have described the evolution of managerial accounting through four phase phases evolution means what how it has come the history how it has come so they are saying four stages it has come in four stages first stage prior to the 1950s okay second stage 1950s to 1965 third stage 1965 to 1985 and fourth stage is 1985 till date so they have classified the evolution into four stages quickly let's run through this there is not much of value addition but you should know where it all started just to set the context right it's very much a part of your uh, you know it's very much a part of your syllabus so all these things will definitely not impact have an impact on the other chapters i told you i gave that explanation initially you know with that explanation itself you can enter into the subject but we are doing all these things right now Go, i'm going to the theory theory part because it is mentioned in your study material which is a part of your syllabus so that's why we are doing it first stage prior to 1980s 1950s it was called as classic era classic means what old vintage traditional fine now the focus was on cost determination financial control they didn't even think about management anywhere that the word management comes in no find out calculate the total cost and make some decent amount of control that was the objective before 1950s production technology was very simple and uh, products passing through a number of distinctive process and societies produce relatively homogeneous product homogeneous means what similar products that consumed the same amount of resources and identifying the cost of the work and material was very easy and the process were driven by speed of manual operations labor oriented technology itself was not there so at that point of time the focus was on cost determination and financial control that's all you need to remember now between 1950 and 1965 for the next 15 years now this is referred to as the age of information for management planning and control they slowly started realizing just the cost calculation financial control is not relevant you need to prepare some information for management planning and control that is very much important so this phase is characterized by the use of traditional accounting management techniques that support decision making and responsibility accounting so techniques such as standard cost profitability analysis we will see standard cost means what the overall per unit you can maximum incur 10 rupees that is called as a standard cost correct profitability analysis if you produce product a this will be the profit if at all instead of product a if you produce product b this will be the profit so product wise profitability or it can even be location wise profitability branch a branch b i want to open a new branch if i keep it in location a this will be the profit if i keep it in location b something else will be the profit which is better so all these things were introduced in the second stage uh, that is actually between 1950 and 1965 and here they paid less attention to external business environment that's how it was evolved you know so slowly only it got evolved first management decision making itself is not relevant is not even taken into account in the first stage slowly in the second stage they started realizing the importance of that now in the third stage that is for the next 20 years 1965 to 85 the focus was on reduction of waste of resources in the production processes by eliminating the non value added activities so for you to uh, you know produce a product convert it into uh, from rm to fg from raw material to fg there are a lot of activities that needs to be taken now what they did was they started analyzing every activity they classified the activity into value added activity and non value added activity what do you mean by value added and non value added activities an activity that adds value 
to my production process is called as an a value added activity an activity that does not add value to my production process is called as a non value added activities they identified this and they were actually focusing on removing all the non value added activities are you clear with this an example of non non value added activity could be suppose for example in the factory in the factory suppose suppose they are storing the raw material let's say in a the a factory is a very big place correct it runs into acres of land let's say they are having the raw material stored in one corner of this land and two kilometers away they have the production facility if you go inside a factory it will run into kilometers okay it re in real life you go into a factory it runs into kilometers now every time i need to start producing i need to come two kilometers pick the raw material and start the production now this is a non value added activity now based on this what the company will do now they will shift it to a location the raw material storage area might be shifted to a location that is very near inside near near my production area itself so that every time you want to take your raw material you need not spend that much amount of time it's a waste of time and of course time is money you know you need to have a particular forklift truck or something like that to bring it fuel waste time waste that laborer who is driving the truck for him the salary is going waste so these are also non value added activities that got removed right now so and the priority for the companies was to adapt new business environment so companies began to seek both cost reduction and quality improvement at the same time the use of robotics and the computer controlled processes enabled the companies to improve their quality and in many cases the it had an impact on the cost reduction so if you remove all your non value added activities obviously you will get up you come up with your cost reduction and now in the fourth stage that is 1985 till date till date they have mentioned here 2000 but on the top they have mentioned till date actually it's till date only the focus was creation of value through effective resource use so creating value through the effective use of resources so during this period technological innovations were at the forefront and competitions were intensified you know that technology has advanced and now because of privatization globalization and all everyone right by left right and center people have their own startup ideas and all of that so competition was also intensified here the focus is on value creation that's the order of the day and managerial accounting techniques were that dominated this period were abc activity based costing just in time target cost balance scorecard value chain analysis strategic management accounting all of this what it is and all in the respective chapters we will be seeing in fact target cost and all is a part of your C, uh, cma final syllabus activity based costing that is chapter number 2 the next chapter will be seeing so certain areas will be seeing here certain areas will be seeing in final so in the fourth stage where the entire focus was on creation of value that's when they came up with advanced tools that we use currently is that's a part of your syllabus that's when the real management accounting got evolved are you clear with this so they have just summarized this entire thing by way of a chart stage 1 cost determination and financial control that was the focus stage 2 slowly information for management and information for management planning and control that was the objective stage 3 reduction of waste of resources in the business process that is what i told you this uh, value added non value added activities and all and final stage was regarding the creation of value through effective use of resources this is all about evolution of managerial accounting you will see some mcq questions are there okay so the distinction between stage 2 3 and 4 is that the shift of focus from providing information to the management to the uh, in the form of loss reduction so look at this the shift of focus from providing information to the management in the form of loss reduction to value uh, to value uh, to and i'm sorry i'm just repeating the shift of focus was from providing information to the management this is how they started now the focus is on loss reduction and value creation look at this loss reduction and value creation so the shift earlier was what providing information right now it's about value creation so if you if this is your objective value creation through effective use of resources all other things are automatically taken care of if you want to create a value you need to effectively use your resources for you to effectively use your resources your waste reduction should be in place for you to do that obviously a proper decision making should be done for which information should be provided to management so this is a very broader scope that's why we are seeing all these things as a part of our syllabus right now so now what institute has done is they have just mentioned this entire phase into four phases they have mentioned it in a tabular column 
so first phase second phase third phase and the fourth phase or the stages fine so they have mentioned the objectives here on the top cost determination financial control information for planning and control reduction and waste of resources and bus in business operation and creation of value through effective use of resources so they have just mentioned what are the techniques that were adopted during the respective period if you see in the first phase for cost determination and accounting they used cost determination standard costing direct costing records of cost accounting allocation of indirect cost uniform costing absorption costing all these things were these are some techniques that were utilized during those period of time typically speaking these are all confined to cost accounting if you see absorption costing and all it's all mentioned in your cost accounting syllabus because earlier in stage one it was about finding out what is the cost of a product they didn't even enter into management accounting of course the planning tools were budgeting controlling tools return on investment something called a stun mile ratio and all they were just using strategic analysis and all were not even done in the first phase correct in the second phase what happened they started coming up with certain developments standard cost accounting developments look at this marginal costing target costing and all is there target costing is a uh, subject matter we will study ideally in your cma final application of discounted cash flow transfer costing basically your transfer pricing we will be seeing it here responsibility accounting then uh, gentani system kaizen costing these are all again a final level area of course kaizen costing is one costing with uh, costing system that was introduced in japan it focuses on continuous and steady small and steady improvement we will see when we when whenever it is applicable we will see it right now right then so these are all some techniques that were evolved in the phase two of the evolution and in the phase three of the evolution came came the activity based costing we will see in the next chapter called as abc activity based costing it's popularly known as abc so in activity based costing we will talk about what are the multiple activities there the value added activities non value added activities everything will be seen non value added activities will be removed all of that we will be seeing an activity based management was involved there and then kaizen costing applicable application of kaizen costing just in time all these things came only in the third stage in fact there is a question regarding this i think there is a mcq question regarding this activity based costing and just in time when it came in which stage it came in the third stage of your evolution clear and of course with respect to strategic analysis slowly in the third stage they came up with something called as life cycle costing and finally in the fourth stage you have something called as value chain analysis five forces model pest swot analysis swot means what strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats so these were all involved extra apart from the normal things so these are all these are all this is how the management accounting as a branch of accounting has evolved initially there was nothing with respect to strategic analysis slowly in the third phase they started something and in the fourth stage currently we have a lot of tools and techniques for the purpose of strategic analysis are you clear with this yes so this is broadly about of course look at this in the fourth stage you have customer profitability analysis competitors analysis your balance scorecard and all if you look at this here traditional tools financial statement analysis cash flow manage man, managerial marginal costing absorption costing standard costing and so on here but in contemporary techniques new techniques you've got target cost just in time total quality management it's called as tqm theory of constraints value chain analysis benchmarking swot analysis balance scorecard and case and costing so all these things are right now a new part of new evolution of management uh, management accounting so what is all these things we will see that is how that is what the subject is all about are you clear with this yes and of course if you look at this the focus is now on strategic decisions and value uh, value creation strategies are long term plans with help an organization realize its goals and of course it's defined as a general direction set for the company and uh, its various components to achieve a desired state in the future so now some companies what they do is so when with respect to strategic decisions there are broadly two strategic decisions which technically is a part of your strategic management paper you have a separate paper for that i think for 50 marks it is not a part of our thing but anyway since it is related there is also strategic management we are talking about management accounting in this area somewhere it's related there is something called as a cost leadership strategy and there is something called as product differentiation strategy what do you mean by that cost leadership strategy means now capturing the market by way of reducing your prices reducing your prices a typical example is tata nano 
what they said they wanted to capture the market by way of giving a very economical car a very cheap car one lakh rupee car very economical so tata opted what a cost leadership strategy whereas if you see if you see so that way also companies have become successful some companies have become really successful by following cost leadership strategy some companies follow product differentiation strategy these companies are not uh, bothered about the cost they want to come up with innovative products and they will only price their product very high typical example is apple if you see apple focuses on product differentiation they were the first ones to come up with a touch phone and and they made a completely a new evolution they had the first mover advantage what do you mean by a first mover advantage they were the first ones in the market to come up with something like a touch phone and all of these things no one ever came up with it correct or not yes so they focused on your product differentiation these companies offered differentiated or unique products that appeal to their customers the products are often high priced than the products or the services of the competitors so if the product is high priced then why will people buy that's where you make a product differentiation now you see apple is very successful so for a company to be successful they can go with a cost leadership strategy or they can go with a product differentiation strategy cost leadership strategy means go for a lower lower price your products very low in so that way you capture the market in case of a product differentiation strategy it means what price your products high but here the focus is on coming up with different new creative products in the market clear so these two are mutually exclusive you should decide which one is better for you that decision who helps who helps the top boss of the company to take this decision as management accountants you need to we all need to as management accountants management accountants are the ones who are required to actually advise the company as to which is better which method we can follow cost leadership we can follow or we can follow this one that is a product differentiation for which there are so many things that needs to be considered who are the most important customers what are the substitute products available what is the most critical capability of the company how leverage how can we leverage it for the new uh, strategic initiatives and will adequate cash be available to fund the strategy there are so many things that goes behind which decision you want to take that is a cost leadership strategy or you want to go for a product differentiation strategy all these analysis will be done by a management accountant and of course all this part we have done management accounting versus cost accounting we have just done all these things we just did and cost accounting versus management accounting also we have just done this we have done all of this and uh, yes all of this has been done role of a management accountant in the normal business world new business world we have seen this all and management accountant in the normal uh, in the modern business world i told you here the circum under the changes in circumstances there has been a paradigm shift in the role of management accountant in the era of globalization the focus has shifted to strategic analysis i told you it's about deciding between a cost leadership strategy or to go for a product differentiation strategy and if you see the third stage the third stage now i am connecting the dots the third stage of the evolution of management accounting is offered is often referred to as a period of lost relevance why because a complete new changes in technologies and all happened after 1985 only that's why the third stage is often referred to as the period of lost relevance the fourth stage came up with a lot of advanced technologies and all of that and that is the reason why the fourth stage came up currently we are in the fourth stage that is it ca it came up with a lot of technological advancements the third stage is actually a period of lost relevance this has been mentioned here clear and of course the impacts of new business environment on management accounting all these impacts i have just explained you i have just explained you in fact i think uh, there is one question the lean manufacturing systems that also we saw there fine let us just see let us just see what are the questions that are there we will just see it yes we have just finished this theoretically also we have finished but understand practically speaking this chapter is all about this subject is all about providing information to the management it is that line of accounting that provides information to the management that help them take meaningful decisions remember the example that i gave you the shutdown versus continue example look how beautiful it is and how practical and relevant a man a management accountant can be of in a real life so management accounting you know management accountants are not replaceable any real life any artificial intelligent tools let it come even that cannot replace the job of a cma that's my honest opinion on 
the future career options available for a CMA. Now let's quickly run through the MCQs, the multiple choice questions. So management accounting, what management accounting accumulates, summarizes, analyzes the available data. It is uh, primarily uh, concerned with the requirements of the management, correct? Makes the corporate planning and uh, strategy effective, all of the above. Obviously, management accounting, all of the above. It, uh, you know, relative answer only. So it uh, focuses on all the three, you know? So it's only going to be all of the above. Management accounting can be viewed as marketing oriented accounting, absolutely not. Management oriented accounting, absolutely. Yes, so some very, very easy thing has been given. Accounting oriented management, manager oriented accounting. Obviously, they have just given some permutation combination, but you know it is management oriented accounting. Then the main objective of management accounting is to maintain accounting records. Absolutely not. That is the scope of financial accounting. To know the amount due from the customers and suppliers. Absolutely not. Now, to ascertain, anal analyze, and interpret the results of the business operations, absolutely, C is only the right answer. To record all business transactions, absolutely not. That is also not the objective. Dash is the study of managerial aspects of financial accounting. You know, it's a management accounting is that study. The purpose of management accounting helps Dash to take decisions. Managers, investors, marketers, banks. Obviously, these three are all outsiders to the company. It's about managers, internal people or the top boss, managing directors, also called as managers. Fine, management accounting assists the management and planning, yes. Directing, yes. Controlling, yes. All of the above only should be the answer. Clear, some easy questions have been given here. The period of lost relevance is the dash of the evolution, is the dash of the evolution of management accounting that happened in the third stage, I told you, because fourth stage had a lot of technological advancement. That is a current era. So from the third stage, the fourth stage, we moved. The focus is on value creation, strategic analysis and all. So the third stage is often called as a period of lost relevance. We saw that. Creation of, uh, a creation of value through effective use of resources. Effective use of resources. I told you this uh, value chain, that is your value added, non-value added activities and all. That we saw in the third stage, correct or not? I told you in a factory, corner of the factory, they have this uh, two kilometers away from the production facility. They have this particular raw material storage area. They need to shift the area and all. I told you, right? Yes. So that focus was done in the second stage. Then just-in-time management and ABC developed during the fourth stage. If you see here, if you see here, if you see the tabular column, if you see the tabular column, you will be seeing, look. We saw this once again. We saw this somewhere. I think in the fourth stage, we were talking about, in the fourth stage, we were talking about, uh, second, I think it's a fourth stage or third stage. One second. Let us quickly, I think the answers have also been mentioned here. So here it's going to be C. Okay, it's going to be C. It's not uh, the fourth stage, it is the third stage. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. This is the third stage. In the third stage only, just in time and and ABC developed. It developed during the third stage. Anyways, I've given the answers here. It developed during the third stage. I will show you here. One second, I will show you here. So it is mentioned, look at this. Look at this. In the third stage only, this is the third stage. During the third stage only, activity-based costing and just in time came in correct or not so using the tabular column you can just answer it so don't worry all this fill in the blanks mcqs true or false or not you just go through what is given here itself that will be sufficient that will be sufficient for examination preparation i don't think they will ask you beyond this then management accounting deals with dash data both qualitative and quantitative data we know that it deals with both qualitative quantitative data true or false Management accounting is primarily not concerned with the requirements of management. What is this? Absolutely, this is false. It is concerned with management only. One of the main characteristics of management accounting is the cause and effect analysis. Yes, true. Next, management accounting is mainly past oriented. Absolutely not. It, it also relies on past data, but it's future oriented only. So this statement is false. The primary objective of management accounting is to manage the company account and improve sales. What is this? No, it is about decision making and control. Key success factor is also known as right now, competitive analysis right now in the current era. The current era is about what? Value creation and face the competition. Yes, this seems true. So you'll put it as true. 
key success factors also known as competitive analysis yes true benchmarking is a process of measuring the performance of a company's product or services or processes against those of another business considered to be in the best of the industry now this benchmarking we didn't see it anywhere in this chapter one but there is a separate area for benchmarking we will see it there what do you mean by benchmarking suppose suppose you see that you know there is one um, let's say there is one student there is one student who who studies really well scores high marks now what our parents will do no see you should also study like that student so they will say they will benchmark that student they will say you benchmark you should be like him you also try to do that whether it's right or not i'm not getting into that but in real life what companies do is look what they say is look fine let's say i'm starting a mobile manufacturing company a new company i will benchmark apple as a benchmark i'll keep them as a benchmark look they are focused so much on value creation let's benchmark apple and let's also progress towards value creation look at this benchmarking is a process of measuring the performance of the company's product or services or process against those of other business considered to be the best in the industry so apple is best in the industry i will compare apple's product with my product and see where i lag so that this will help me to improve further in the business correct so this statement is true we have not seen it technically speaking so i have just copied paste all these things from the institute study material ideally speaking in the chapter one this benchmarking was not seen anywhere anyways they have just kept it we will also do i think so it is not mentioned anywhere anyways logically you can answer in organizations there are typically three levels top middle and lower level first level yes true then management accounting concentrates on post-mortem analysis absolutely not post-mortem means what past past analysis false it is futuristic driven evaluation and control of performance is not a limitation of management what is this evaluation and control of performance is not a limitation obviously how can that be a limitation if at all it is mentioned it should be mentioned as advantages only okay so anyways what kind of a question i don't know evaluation and control per of performance is not a limitation correct it is not a limitation fine look at the question i i i mean that is very lame next deregulation we know that the act or process of removing the legislative controls or restrictions uh, from an industry commodity etc true obviously so government removing their controls on any any particular industry or a company on the product is called as deregulation so all the answers are also given here fill in the blanks lean manufacturing system that seeks to reduce waste by implementing dash production systems and focuses on dash we saw that i i underlined one area and i told you lean manufacturing system it uh, it seeks to reduce the reduce the waste by implementing jit manufacturing system just in time i gave the restaurant example only after you place an order he will heat the pan or tawa and he will actually prepare the dosa and give you basically this is a pull system that is only if a demand comes i will actually produce the product it is not a push system where product is produced and pushed into the market let the demand come and then i will produce it there has been a paradigm shift in the role of management accountant in the era of globalization we saw that the shift the focus of shift is towards strategic analysis right now okay i think i have not finished this lean manufacturing systems that seek to reduce the waste by implementing jit production system and focuses on what advanced management technologies so we saw this line earlier i showed this to you i showed this to you lean manufacturing system towards advanced uh, manuf advanced uh, manufacturing technologies one second if you want i will show it to you once again i think i look at this so in page number 23 lean manufacturing systems that seek to reduce the waste by implementing the just in time production system focuses on quality simplifying processes and focusing on advanced manufacturing technologies now you might have a question sir in this entire book there are so much in this entire chapter so much of theory is there now in one sentence alone they are giving like this how will we know sir absolutely how will you know see if they are giving something logical ncqs true or false you can write now this is one challenge with respect to fill in the blanks what i will suggest is you only do the fill in the blanks that is given in the study material for chapter number 1 alone i have kept it here for the remaining chapters generally it is all qual quantitative that is your questions 
question and answers will be the numerical problems will be doing so the discussion on the fill in the blanks or all these things will, is not generally clubbed along with this so what you need to do is basically you stick only per chapter five six fill in the blanks is there that alone you study and go because beyond this nothing much can be done fill in the blanks they can ask any sentence what you will read sentence by sentence and mug it up absolutely it doesn't work like that so fill in the blanks alone you strategize it for your exam preparation whatever we are doing in the classroom that is sufficient clear with this and of course certain things is mentioned in the study material if you just go through it that alone is sufficient for fill in the blanks portion clear next next uh, yes there has been a paradigm shift in the role of management accountant in the era of globalization and the focus has shifted to yes strategic analysis we saw it somewhere next management accounting ensued with the simplest aspect of cost determination and financial control cost determination and financial control this was also mentioned somewhere i highlighted to you so please this five uh, fill in the blanks alone you just accept what is given here and you just prepare it accordingly beyond this fill in the blanks you need not prepare specifically it is practically humanly not possible clear so here cost and management accounting ensured the simplest aspect it just started off yes we saw this right in phase one what was the basic objective it started off with it ensued means what it started it started with what in phase one that is stage one phase one started with cost determination and financial control you just need to write that you remember that yes strategic management accounting provides the financial analysis to support uh, the formulation of successful competitive strategies they have mentioned here as competitive strategies competitive strategies so here strategic management accounting provides what it provides financial analysis to support the formulation of successful competitive strategies fine you learn certain things from fill in the blanks from an examination perspective it's absolutely fine don't worry about it because it's practically not possible for you to read line by line and remember what every line in the chapter says absolutely not possible clear next next dash criteria dash criteria are a set of standards for a company's behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen the potential investments it's called as esg that is environmental social governance environmental social governance is criteria is a set of standards for a company's behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen the potential investments it's called as esg i will show you where we see where we see, saw this esgs i told you in one part no where it is not just about uh, making money you also need to be very uh, environment conscious look at this sustainable issues look at this esgs has become the focal point in the operations of companies basically this is what specific focus on environmental issues it is becoming increasingly possible so what do you mean by esgs so it is mentioned only here once again i'll just see this here esg where is it mentioned esg this is mentioned look at this if you look at your study material esg is mentioned in this page fine apart from that it is mentioned in this mcq only so i think the full form of esg also here only it's mentioned so you need not have to worry so by way of fill in the blanks institute wants you to learn a few things that's okay let's keep it like this these five areas alone you prepare for fill in the blanks but for that everything conceptual knowledge itself is sufficient for you to tackle the questions so esgs means what environmental social and governance criteria are the set of standards for companies behavior used by socially conscious investors to screen the potential investments so this is what is given in first chapter broadly speaking we saw a lot of theoretical aspects in this chapter but to sum it up to sum it up whatever we saw initially is what is actually required for you to enter into this particular subject we saw that this accounting itself has three broad branches or disciplines we have financial accounting cost accounting and management accounting and management accounting is that branch of accounting that provides the information to the management that helps them take meaningful decisions and we saw an example of shutdown versus continue how the manner of presenting the data itself can make help the management to take a meaningful decision so a normal accountant said if you continue you are going to incur a loss of 10000 so shut down but no 
but no what it is if you shut down the management account that says if you shut down the loss is going to be 15000 if you continue the loss is just going to be 10000 it's better to continue with the loss of 10000 than to shut down with the loss of 15000 here management accountant is properly advising the company to shut down sorry to continue the to continue the business for the next one month even if there is a loss of 10000 there is only you are still going to save prevent yourself from a loss of 5000 that's why i said the overall objectives of management accounting are twin in nature what are the two objectives decision making and control so on this note on this note i'm concluding this first chapter the first chapter is over lot of theoretical aspects were involved in this chapter from a bookish perspective from a book perspective yes chapter one had a lot of theory you just learn those just go through it once try to attempt the mcqs fill in the blanks true or false and leave it there but from a conceptual viewpoint please stick to this example please stick to this particular explanation that i've given you i have annotated here this i will be giving it to you whatever i have annotated here will be provided to you as a pdf copy you can have it clear with this that will help you to understand the su uh, subject in a much better manner and please don't think that this is going to be a theoretical uh, subject this is 100 percent a practical paper we will be seeing a lot of decision making and control related aspects in fact i even figured out and showed you one example where we did some numerical example numerical thing only so on that note i'm concluding this session where we saw the overall objective of management accounting is to assist the management in with two aspects that is decision making and control so on this note i am concluding this session i will see you all in the next video with a brand new chapter thank you all so much and have a great day